Okay, hello and good afternoon, um, uh, viewers, um, everyone, uh, to our subscribers, uh, followers, um, for today's uh, webinar on um, online distance learning. So, ito na po, teachers, no, yung ating um, uh, third installment okay, ng ating um, webinar series for distance learning. Okay, of course, um, mulit-muli, uh, I think nagsasawa na po kayo sa uh, presence ko, but ako po si uh, Sir Franco uh, from uh, Kagapay Teacher Support. And with me today, no? Uh, a very special guest, a co-moderator for today. Um, so, uh, Ms. Rada, pwede niyo pong i-introduce um, ang inyong sarili sa ating mga audience, ating mga uh, viewers. Maraming salamat, Sir Franco. Magandang tanghali po sa ating lahat na mga televiewers or mga tagapakinig ngayong araw na ito. Uh, masasabi ko na mapalad ako dahil binigyan ako ni Sir Franco ng pagkakataon na makasama din kayo, mga kapwa ko guro. So, isa rin po akong guro. Uh, masaya ako na kapiling kayo ngayon. Maraming salamat, Sir Franco, at magandang tanghali ulit sa inyong lahat. Yon. So maraming salamat ulit Ms. Roda for uh, for being with us uh, here today sa ating uh, webinar series on online distance learning as uh, a distance learning part 3. Okay? So pares po kami ni uh, Ms. Roda, no? Pares kaming uh, uh, araling panlipunan ng teacher. So so mamaya siguro yun yung magiging mas context namin. Pero siguro ano lang before tayo mag-start, kay um, gusto lang namin siyempre of course uh, bigyan ulit ng context or i-contextualize yung ating uh, webinar for today, no? Um, ito ay isang um, part ng ating uh, webinar series on distance learning kasi um, again gusto namin kayong i-equip uh, ng mga ng mga practices, ng mga approaches, mga strategies uh, to help you cope with the shift to distance learning. Okay? And again, uh, lagi namin ginagamit yung word na distance learning kasi 
um, gusto namin, again, mas maging inclusive. Kasi magkakaliba tayo ng modalities. Tama, Miss Roda, no? Siyempre, hindi tayo pwedeng nakafocus lang sa online dis- uh, online learning, no? Tama yan, Sir Franco. So, depende yeah. yan kung ano yung pwedeng applicable sa ating lahat. Okay. So, mm-hmm. nag-offer tayo o nagbibigay tayo na siguro kahit konting idea lang na baka pwede nila magamit kung applicable sa kanila at pwede makatulong din sa kanila. Yes, correct, no, Mr. Rodan. So, magkakaiba tayong modality. So, um, yun talaga yung pinagtutuunan natin. Pansin. And yun yung i-deliver ng mga speakers natin today. Kung paano nga ba tayo dapat mag-craft ng valid and reliable assessments for distance learning. Mr. Roda, um, ikaw bilang isang guru, ano ba yung, and nag-shift tayo sa distance learning, ano nga ba ang pinakamalaking challenge ng paggawa ng uh, assessments ngayong uh, nasa distance learning modality tayo? Ako, Sir Franco, uh, dahil kakasimula lang ng bukas ng klase namin, siguro hindi pa namin talaga nasusubukan kung ano yung totoong challenge na mararanasan, na, mararanasan namin. Pero ang na-forsee ko lang, um, ang number one siguro, kung ano man yung gamitin namin uri ng assessment, yung paano ba namin masisiguro na, na yung amin ibibigay na assessment ay talagang masusukat yung kakayanan ng ating mga bata na sila lamang yung sasagot, na sila lamang yung, yung mag-iisip na ito yung mga natutunan nila. So, in, siguro tingnan na lang natin kapag ka, yes, lalo na ngayon, kapag may mga speakers tayo, di ba? Excited Oo. ako makikita kasi sigurado ako marami tayong mapupulot sa kanila ng mga tulong na pwede rin namin magamit sa kasalukuyan. Correct, no, Miss Rodan. Pati ako, actually, uh, no, actually, no, nasa planning stage pa lang tayo nito sa, para sa part 3 na ito. Na-excite ako kasi nakita ko yung outline ng mga speakers natin. Oo oh, nga, eh. Sobrang, sobrang ganda. Parang meron din ako mga tabi ko. Pati Arang, ako, magiging viewer ako ngayong araw na ito. Correct. Kailangan mo rin makinig kasi kahit tayo mismo matututo mula sa kanila. Yes. Ayan. So, um, siguro, Miss uh, Roda, ano na tayo? Uh, proceed na tayo with, um, of course, um, We we'll have two speakers for today, uh, each one uh, taking on specific um, aspects ng um, uh, crafting valid and reliable assessments for distance learning. So we'll have Mr. Galvin Mok uh, for today and also Ms. Jem Astronomo uh, also um, um, with us today. No? Okay? And um, okay, um, siguro before tayo mag-start, some reminders lang. No? Okay, um, so... Ito yung mga COP, mga usually, okay, lagi natin na nakikita, na, na tinatanong ng mga audience natin sa atin. Uh, so, unang-una, yung ating uh, evaluation links um, uh, will be made available at our website by 5.30 p.m. Okay, so, uh, meron po kami ngayong, uh, so, yung uh, kakal, um, put up lang po uh, ng ating um, website. So, um, ito na po yung link, nasa description din po yan, at nakapin din po na comment yan sa ating live stream. So, doon nyo lang po tingnan. Uh, yung evaluation links natin will be made available by 5:30 p.m. so 5:30 po um, um, viewers um, um, ang at or participants ang ating um, paglabas ng ating evaluation links and of course uh, yung e certificates natin uh, isa pong misconception teachers no hindi po ito based on uh, your registration so um, it's based on your evaluation so please make sure po na makapag evaluate tayo and lastly before tayo magstart no Um, questions about the presentation should be reserved during the question and answer portion. Bakit po? Kasi uh, mabilis pong mawala ang ating mga uh, mga questions sa live chat kapag uh, tinanong po kagad natin. So please make sure po audience no, or uh, participants na uh, i-reserve natin. Sulat muna po natin sa papel or itabi po natin sa ating mga cell phones or kung saan man. <laughs> Correct. Yeah, tama, Miss Roda. No? Ipunin <laughs> muna kasi... Hindi po namin yan mababasa habang um, habang nag, may, nagpe-present. Um, may nagpe-present. Okay, so yan po. So pakitandaan na lang po. Okay? So, Ms. Roda, ano na tayo, no? Uh, simulan na natin uh, with our first um, speaker for okay. today. Okay, Sir Franco. Siguro bago ang lahat, napakaswerte po namin kasi hindi kayo nagsasawang makinig sa ating mga speakers dahil dito ay makakatulong sa ating lahat. So siguro hindi ko na patatagalin. I would like to introduce to you Our first speaker for today, we are very lucky because this person is available for today. He, uh, she is a good friend of ours and she's also a colleague. So without further ado, I would like to I would like us to welcome Miss Jamel C. Astronomo, a teacher from the South Green Hills. Okay, so yan, welcome na po natin, no? So um ang ating first um speaker for today. Okay. So yan, welcome po Miss Jem. 
Hello, Hello. Okay, so, so, hapon po, yes. So, um, bigyan lang po natin ng um, sometimes Miss uh, Jem to set up no, ng ating uh, kanyang um, presentation. Okay po. Okay. So, Sir Franco, pagka habang nagantay tayo, na-overwhelm ako na dahil first time ko mag-live. Actually, mahihayin po ako sa totoong buhay. <laughs> Pero first time ko mag-live at natutuwa ako kasi ang daming tao mula sa iba't ibang lugar. Yung nakikita kong talagang bumabate, na Google afternoon, tsaka nagko-comment na makikita man na napaka-interesting sa kanila yung magiging paksa natin sa araw na ito. Mm-mm. Correct no sir, uh, Miss 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 Roda no. Tsaka again, uh, it, it, it nga yung promise natin sa mga audience natin na lagi kapag meron tayong uh, webinars, laging sila ang ating iniisip, sila yung lagi nating uh, pinagtutuunan ng pansin. So ano ba yung kailangan ng mga teachers natin, ano? So kaya that's why parang ta- parang tayo rin Miss Roda no, pag nag-iisip tayo ng mga activities oh. para sa classroom natin, correct. <laughs> laging mga estudyante rin natin ang ang iniisip natin. So this correct. time Uh, bilang teacher support tayo, yung mga guro naman ang lagi nating iniisip. Okay, so siguro po um, ready na yata ang um, um, ating uh, pre- uh, presenter for today. So, Sir, parang, sorry, sabi ng screen yata. Yan, okay na. Yan, Mr. Um, Jem, okay na po. Okay, one moment. Yan ako lang, Mr. Ha. Yan, nakasplit kasi. Sorry. Just give Jen a uh, 30 seconds. Yan, yeah. papalit kasi. Okay. So again po now, while waiting for Miss Jen, no, reminders for all our audience, can please make sure that um, your um, your evaluations okay, will be sent um, uh, this afternoon. So, ipapost po namin yan, ipapublish po namin yan sa aming website uh, at 5.30 p.m. Okay, so again, the links are available sa, so ito po yung link, we're, we're showing it right now, and also in the description and um, in our, um, um, what do you call this, um, comment section. So, nakapin po yun doon, so hanapin na lang po natin, okay? So um, again, siguro nagkakaroon lang po natin ng konting uh, technical difficulties from um, Miss... Uh, so intayin lang po natin. So yun, Miss Rada, no? Yes, yes, Wait. sir. Franco. Yes. No problem, well, it, Jim. <laughs> oh, okay lang naman. Again, Are pero ito yung, re- yes, ito yung reality natin sa Pilipinas, yes. eh, even our Wi-Fi. Okay? So lalo na pag nag-online distance learning tayong lahat, um, makakatop at makakatop tayo. So again, ang ano natin lagi, relax lang tayo teachers relax. and um, yes, we'll, we'll go, get through it okay? and pwede natin yung malampasan. Natin siya, pwede so, kailangan, of course, just go, go, Ms. Rada. So, kahit anong ganda ng plano mo, pagka ang connection na yung naging problema or technical difficulties, talagang kailangan uh, wag tayo magpanic and then yes. try to figure it out para rin sa mga sadyante natin yan. Mm-mm. So, kakakag tayo ngayon, no? si, ako sa save, kami sa Savior, nagsimula na kami So, nakatikim na kami ng um, <laughs> online distance learning. At okay. talagang, uh, hindi siya madali. Talagang umaatikabong uh, um, pagpaplano at okay. um, pagbabago ng plano, actually. So, dapat so, marami kang plan B, plan C, yes. plan B. Diba? Ay, plan B, pero, sorry. Oo, pero yung mga teachers natin, uh, sanay din siya. Siyempre, sa classroom, nangyayari din yan eh, na madami rin tayong uh, kailangang uh, uh, isipin, no? Correct. Okay, mukhang, mukhang ready na po si Miss Jem. No? Okay, so Miss Jem, okay. Um, the floor is yours, okay. Hello, good afternoon. Magandang hapon sa ating mga kasama ngayon. Um, thank you for joining us uh, ngayong hapon. I hope I make your uh, time worthwhile, no? So, um, sana maayos naman yung audio and yung presentation. I hope you can see it clearly. So, I would like to introduce first myself. No, um, I'm Miss Jamel Astronomo. Yung sa name ko don sa sa poster that that's my nickname, Jam Astronomo. So hindi narin ako sa nai na sinasabi yung buong name ko, Miss Jamel Astronomo. No? So um, I'm 19 years old. Sa sa in the academy, in the in the uh, teaching. No, in, not in. I, I don't want to share my age talaga, pero I'm 19 years in terms of yung sa academy. Yeah. And then. I'm an ethic coordinator and a part-time teacher in a, the Adult Night High School. So I I work at Lasalle Green Hills as the ethic coordinator. It's relatively new, bagong-bago lang po. And 
Um, but yung part-time teaching ko um, sa adult night high school, um, most of my examples later doon yung magiging foundation natin sa, sa work ko sa part-time. Yun. And then, um, since wala masyadong interaction, ano, kasi I'm, I'm, well, I would like to call myself still a traditional teacher. No? So, minsan gusto ko, mas gusto ko pa rin na, na nakakapag-interact. So, um, just so I can at least share something about myself even without being really physically together no um i, I like watching movies uh, alone um I, I like watching movies alone and i hope oh, mas okay na yung audio yan and um kung hindi ako teacher ano ako um ako ay magiging secretary or xerox lady so th- those are the things na feeling ko magandang i-share kasi hindi ko naman talaga kayo nakikita so um these are things na sa sarili ko lang talaga so ayan na share ko na at least sa inyo so sa atin ba natatanong ba natin lalo na sa panahon ngayon na napakahirap maging isang guro ano so kung hindi kaya ako teacher ano ako ngayon no? so ako siguro secretary and or xerox lady yeah. Today's session, um, uh, since I, I like to be uh, the session to be an interactive one, I hope you, um, if not everybody will be able to join. So, um, mamaya explain ko kung bakit, uh, bakit ako naglagay ng ganito kung ang topic naman natin ay crafting valid and reliable um, assessments. No, So, if I may just ask, is it all right if you um, open any browser and then just go to the URL, www.gosoapbox.com, and then tap or click join event or sign in. So, you don't have to sign in or sign up. You just have to join the event. So, um, bilang lang ako ng 20, no? hopefully may, may makagawa or may makasali sa atin. No? Mag- madali lang yung tanong natin. Um, disclaimer lang ako, walang premyo sa, sa, wala rin namang panalo. No? So, walang premyo kung mauuna kang sumagot. So, last 10 seconds. 10. So, hopefully my audio is now a little better. N- uh, 9, 8, 7, 6, 9, Alam ko ang teachers, napakagaling natin mag-multitask. So, we'll see kung kaya ba natin na, uh, yan, kaya ba natin na uh, habang nakikinig sa boses ni Miss Jem ay kayang magbukas ng ibang website. So, last 5 seconds. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ayan. Di ko nakikita kung nakalagin na kayo pero malalaman ko later. May ibibigay ako sa inyong mga numbers. Hindi ko ito phone number. Kung gusto niyo ako i-text, mamaya na lang. Okay? So, ang number na ito, ito yung sign up code. So, hindi niyo kailangan mag-sign in. Ita-type niyo lang yung numbers. No? So, ang numbers ay 682-804-152. Alam ko nang itatanong ninyo, dapat ba may dash or pwedeng wala? With or without, pwede. So, makakapag-join ka na. Okay? Isa lang muna ang tanong natin dyan. So, tignan natin. 682-804-152. Tandaan, hindi yan number ni Miss Jem. Ito ay access code lamang kung paano makapag-join doon sa tanong. Yan. Bilang pa ako ng 10, ha? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay. Sana may mga makakapag-join. Ano? So, yeah. So, ayan. Uh-huh. Um, pwede nyo pong itap yung um, pwede nyo itap yung question. Ang question dyan ay magkano ang iyong uh, baon no, nung high school ka. No? So, tingnan natin kung makakasagot kayo, and then titignan ko rin yung sagot niyo. Okay, ako magsa-sign up ako ha, kasi ano, uh, gusto ko makita yung, sign in ako kasi gusto ko makita yung sagot. Ayan. So, bigyan ko pa kayo ng ilang minutes. Okay? So, maybe na one. Okay. So, Meron tayong mahusay, meron tayong ilang respondents to, ba? Maray pa sumasagot, napakahusay, no? So, ah, uh, ba? 74%, 5 pesos hanggang 40 pesos. Aba, tumataas, tumataas. 41 pesos to 80 pesos ang baon ko noon, 20%. Ah, uh, 
uh, 81 to 120 pesos, 5%. Higit sa 120, meron tayong 1%. So, hindi na ako masyadong magtatagal. Ayan, dumadami. Nakikita niyo yung number of responses. So, ang una ko lang gustong ma-share sa inyo, kapag gumagamit kayo ng Microsoft PowerPoint bilang presentation, alam ko, ito ang madalas nating magagamit, no? Kasi, like, kagaya ko, um, wala akong Mac na computer, no? So, um, nothing against Mac users, Wala, wala lang din po talaga akong kakayahan upang maka, makabili ng uh, isang Mac computer. Ang ginamit ko po dito, hindi na po ako lumabas sa slide kung mapapansin ninyo. Um, pwede nyo po siya i-check out sa Microsoft PowerPoint, um, mga 2010 na version pataas. Check nyo lang po live web. No? So, um, hindi na kayo magko-connect palabas. If you are connecting to a URL, you can just... Um, clearly view it here on the slide. So, kagaya niyan, 77%, 19%, 4%, 1%. So, one type of assessment that we can actually ask, yung very simple for our kids, no, or for, sorry, ah, magre-refer ako sa students bilang kids kasi um, uh, isa akong elementary teacher. Ano? So, yan. Ilagay ko lang. So, dumadami pa, 176 responses. Salamat po sa ating mga, sa mga sumagot, no? This actually, tinanong ko rin ito kasi gusto ko lang din naman malaman. More or less, yung age ng ating audience, no? Siyempre, kapag nasa 5 pesos to 40 pesos, medyo mura pa noon ang bilihin. So, malamang kasing age ko kayo, no? So, mga 90s, nag-high school, 80s or 90s. Um, kapag ang baon mo ay 41 to 80 pesos, siguro medyo mga 1998. 7, pataas na yan. And then, mga year 2000 na yung mga 81 pesos, pataas. And siguro kung 120 pesos yung baan mo nung high school ka, medyo bago-bago ka pa lang. No? So, this one at least gets to give me an idea of the age of my audience. no So, because this is something I can relate to. So, yeah, when we do our assessment, mga simple formative assessment, it has to be something that our students can relate to. And then, we have to give meaning. Bakit mo tinanong? Bakit kailangan tanungin? Bakit kailangan malaman? Okay? Salamat po sa mga sumasagot pa. Ayan, ang dami pala talagang. Mukhang maraming sa age ko, 5 pesos at saka 40 Peso. So, tingnan natin mamaya. May mga iba pa namang tanong. Okay. So, uh, ito na tayo sa... Um, is it alright if I ask you to click on go back to event? Because I'm gonna be opening another question. So, yan. Go back to event. Hopefully. Yan. May i-unlock lang ako dyan. Go back to event. I-unlock ko. Um... Kindly respond also to this question. Ano ang wasto at maaasahang batayan upang masabi mo na ikaw ay gusto ng tao? So, tignan natin. Ha? Go back to event and then just click the recently opened question. Yan, inagsisimula na. No? Pinag- lalaanan ako ng oras. No? So, isa lang ang pwede natin isagot. Ano dyan, no? Ayan, ang bilis, no? Nakikita natin yung bilis ng pagsagot ng mga bata. Mas maganda sana kung naririnig natin sila sa kasi sa totoong classroom setup or traditional class, hindi pala totoo. Sorry um, for the term, no? And of course, sorry rin kung, uh, kung mapapansin nyo, I speak in Filipino and in English. Um, Magta-taglish na lang ako pansamantala, no? So, um, pagpasensyahan nyo na. Um, yan, so... Marami na sumasagot. 115 responses, 121 raising. Okay. Actually, ang pinakasagot ko dyan, ano eh, yung number one eh. Pero parang dalawa lang ang kasama ko na ang aking batayan ay kapag binibigyan ako ng mga bagay o mga pagkain na gusto ko. So, pinakamarami sa atin yung pinaglalaanan ng oras at panahon. Ang sumunod ay pinapakita niya ang, nag, ang na siya ay nag-aalala, no? Consistently, no? So, yan. Okay, so, yan. So, kapag tayo nagpapagawa ng mga ito, these are very simple assessments on how we can check also the students, no, um, not only their understanding, but um, how well they are, no. It doesn't necessarily mean if you're creating assessment, it's always cognitive, no. Most especially at this time, we, we have to ask them how they are because the the physical presence that they need, no? Nung teacher tayo talaga sa loob ng isang classroom ay hindi natin maibigay ngayon kasi nga na, tayo ay nasa distance learning at ang ginagamit nating modality, karamihan sa atin ay online learning. So, ito yung mga paraan kung paano mararamdaman nila na tayo ay nag 
pagpapakita ng pagpapahalaga, hindi lamang sa dapat nilang matutunan kung hindi sa kanilang nararamdaman. Isa sa natutunan ko sa pagkakaroon ng online learning, no? so yung you you get to have a connection first with your audience before uh, before you know yung yung giving out what is due due to them no yung ating mga responsibilities as a teacher siguro um dun sa uniqueness ng situation natin ngayon so 50-50 na siya kailangan balance no? so we ask them first how they are and then we we get to deliver what they what's due to them no? so thank you very much sa mga respondents natin ayan so Kung mapapansin ninyo doon sa tanong, ito ay in Filipino, uh, ano ang wasto at maaasahang batayan? So sa assessment, ito yung pinakamahalaga na dalawang salita. Actually, ito yung pag-uusapan natin talaga ngayon. Wasto at maaasahang batayan. So nakikita niyo yung kapatid ko talaga. Sorry. Ang wasto, uh, ito ay Filipino ng, uh, ano ba ito? Aling ba ang reliable dyan? Wasto o maaasahan? Maaasahan is reliability, wasto is validity. No? So, wasto at maaasahang batayan. So, ang hindi pwedeng nakakagawa lang tayo, kailangan meron tayong mga batayan. Okay? So, isa pang tip na maibibigay ko siguro, no? Kasi, ano, ano ako eh, educational technology, sorry. So, kung gagamit tayo ng mga apps, kagaya ng ganito, minsan kasi nalilipat doon yung, yung focus natin, ano, na, kung ano yung gagamitin ko na application para makapagdikha ako ng magagandang assessment, um, take it easy um, because it takes time to practice. And um, tayo as an adult, no, um, medyo mas mabilis tayo sa multitasking. So, very important to know also our audience. Kaya ba ng bata kung siya lang ang gagawa? Okay. So, or kaya ba ng internet connection niya? No? So, it's something that um, I have shared to the to my partners in the alternative education. So, meron kaming department doon. Ako nagpa-part-time. Uh, ang students namin doon ay uh, parang mission school namin ka ng Lasal Guinness. And we are on mainstream. Meron kaming mga um, student partners na um, deaf. No? So, yun. Yan. So, okay. So, yung tinanong natin kanina. What I will be, hopefully what I will tackle in, you know, in 30 minutes would cover at least, uh, just, this is, these are only reminders kasi, or, ang pinaka-objective ko lang naman is for you to recall, no, whatever yung napag-aralan natin kasi pare-pareho naman tayo ng course, no, na secondary education or um, elementary education or yung mga kumuha ng um, certificate program. Lahat tayo pinag-aralan natin to Pinag-aralan natin ng buong semester. No? Pero ngayon, magkakaroon tayo ng 30 minutes para lang ma-review natin, maalala natin, at mailagay natin sa konteksto ng distance learning kung ano man, kagaya ng sinabi ni Sir Franco at naging ang Roda kanina, sa modality na gagamitin natin. No? So, palagay ko karamihan sa atin talaga full online learning. Wala naman talaga makakapag blended learning. Blended learning uh, na yung merong face-to-face, etc. Okay? So, yeah. So, I would like to cover at least yung general um, overview ng assessment in the online or distance distance learning, sorry, validity and reliability. Um, some challenges na palagay ko ay may, na-encounter at na encounter natin lahat at some strategies. Again, I, I'm not here to offer any solutions but some strategies na uh, I feel would be helpful also for us teachers. No? So, Ano pa yung assessment? So, alam natin ba, lagi natin itong ginagamit. Ano? So, ang assessment, ito ay ang pagtatasan, ang pagkakatuto. Kaya dapat tayo may batayan. Paano yung batayan mo kung bakit ka mahal ng isang tao? Kagaya lang din kapag nagtuturo tayo, ano yung batayan mo para malaman mong natuto yung isang bata? Pero hindi lahat nang gagaling sa kanya. Kailangan ikaw ang maging daan upang makita niya rin makita ng bata at makita natin na bilang guro na talaga siya ay may natutunan. So, parang di ako nakatingin sa kanya. So, yeah. So, yeah. so kailangan uh, uh, hindi naka... Uh, assessment does not only rely on the score that our students will, uh, will get. No? Kasi the score that they are getting is 
highly dependent on how you made your assessment. The, that's why the topic for today is how can, how can we make um, at least a valid and reliable assessment in a distance learning. So, kasi iba siya sa face-to-face. Marami kasi yung um, ibang facet kapag ang, ang assessment na gagawin mo ay online, na directly online. So, pero pareho sila ng meaning. Wala namang ibang, ibang kahulungan ng assessment. Ang assessment pa rin ay laging pagkakatasan, pagtatasan ng pagkakatuto ngayon. Bakit ito mahalaga? Bakit ito mahalaga? Hindi lamang sa mga face-to-face, pati sa online learning. In general, sa education, mahalaga ito una sa guro, sa ating mga teachers. Pangalawa, sa mga studyante. Sa teacher, it, ang, ang pagkakaroon ng isang assessment ay nangangahulugan or pwedeng maaaring magbigay sa iyo ng datos. It can give you data on... Um, if your strategies are valid or effective. No? Kung yung ginawa mo bang pagtuturo ay paraan ng pagtuturo ay uh, tama, naging sapat upang sila ay matuto. Sa mga, uh, sa mga ating mag-aaral, lalo na sa ating mga bata, ano, napakahalaga na malaman nila kung ano yung, paano susukatin na natuto sila. No? So, hindi hindi laging score no minsan yung pagbinigyan mo sila kapag ito sa face to face pagbinigyan mo sila ng sticker kapag binigyan mo sila ng uh, ng stamp no so ito ay nangangahulugan na para sa kanila na tama ang kanilang ginagawa higit sa lahat ngayong panahon kung kailan tayo ay merong distance learning or online learning lalo dapat nating ipadama sa kanila or lalo nating ipaalam sa kanila kung tama ang nagagawa no so nagagawa nila kasi wala tayo upang gabayan sila hindi nila tayo pwede puntahan sa faculty room wala tayong online faculty room to remind them or to um to be there no to to answer their questions basically so we always have to open our communication with them no so sa assessment mahalaga ito sa ating mga guro kasi gusto nating malaman kung tayo pa ba yung mga napagdesisyonan natin na paraan upang ito ay maituro sa kanila. Sa mga bata, sa ating mga estudyante, ito ay mahalaga upang malaman nila na sila ay natuto rin. Okay? So, uh, it works both ways. Anyway, sa labas naman yan, no? dalawang, dalawang boxes yan. Siyempre, sa labas yan, kasama yung admin, yung school, yung DepEd, yung district. no Pero I, I just want to give context bakit sa sa teacher at sa student mahalaga kasi sa online classroom tayo pa lang naman talaga ang magkakasama. Okay? So I I hope um nalinawan natin yung bakit may halaga ang assessment hindi lamang sa face to face kahit sa distance learning, kahit online learning, ano pang modality yan, assessment ang magsasabi sa atin kung na-achieve natin yung mga dapat nating ma-achieve para sa mga bata, no? So Sabi nila, assessment is one of the most challenging aspects of the academic experiences to navigate in an online context. Actually, mahirap na siya. Mahirap na siya sa totoong buhay. No? Yung um, kapag, kapag ikaw ay yung traditional teacher. I call myself a traditional teacher ano? kasi, um, well, it's very ironic. No? Edtech ako pero hindi ako ganun kahilig talaga mag-computer. No? So, um, yan. Yeah, uh, Pero hirap na hirap pa din ako na aaminin ko, hirap na hirap akong dumika or mag-isip kung ano, paano ko ba i-assess uh, ito kapag ito yung kailangan kong uh, ma-achieve. No? So, ngayon, ang, um, yan, so, tingnan natin kung mga paano. Yan, no? So, okay, nilikha, ang DepEd nilikha nila to, no? yung, yung MELK, no? MELK, ah, tama ba yung basa ko? M-E-L-C or MELK? Uh, sino kayang makakapagsabi kung ano ang ibig sabihin ng milk, milk or milk? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure how, how you really pronounce it. Ano? So, um, it's, um, hindi ko nakikita yung stream, pero um, I hope you were able to get it. It's mo, most essential learning competencies. No? So, ang DepEd natin, no? Naka, nakapaglabas sila ng most uh, essential learning competencies. Kami rin sa school, ginagamit namin ito. No? So, um, ano ba yung milk? No? So, tapos... Paano natin siya i-relate sa topic natin ngayon? Bigyan ko kayo ng example. So, ako ay part-time teacher sa alternative education. Ayan, nakukulitan na kayo minsan na uulit ko na. Sorry, ayan. So, ito yung isang example ng document. Ang tinuturo ko ay empowerment technologies. So, may makikita tayo dito sa pangatlong column natin. Ano? Most essential learning competencies. No? So, ang assessment, ang first step lagi, alamin natin kung ano ba yung gusto natin sukatin. 
alamin natin kung ano ba yung gusto na or kailangan na matutunan ng mga bata. Kasi ito ginawa to ng DepEd for us to have a standard. Hindi pwedeng ang grade 3 ng isang school ay hindi ito ma-achieve. No? Hindi, hindi ganun yun. Kaya tayo nagkakaroon ng standard. No? Kaya nga tayo merong mga standardized test. No? So, yung mga, dati yung mga para sa mga kasing edaran ko no yung mga nakapag NCEE diyan ano isa to sa isang mahalagang exam noon na kinukuha namin yung high school no so yan so ito yung unang hakbang kailangan mabasa natin at ma- maisa puso natin ano ba yung essential learning competencies um nabasa ko na ito ay good for school year 2020-2021 ano kasi parang parang kinompress talaga nila kung alin yung mga dapat nating maituro no sa online modality natin ngayon na sa distance learning with an online modality no pero sila meron din silang uh, mga printed modules no yung, yung DepEd no so whether you're printed whether you go online pare-pareho ang ating uh, most essential learning competencies so you begin here ano ba yung competency na dapat na kayanin ng bata para dito ako magbabase sa mga assessment na gagawin ko. Okay? Yeah. Okay pa ba kayo? Sorry ha. Ayan. Baka medyo mabilis or something. So, I'll show you one framework. No? Ayan. Ako, para na, framework, framework. Para sa mga nagmamasters dyan, anong mahilig sa mga frameworks. Aha. Pag may mga speaker tayo, no, na, ano, ayan, napapakita lagi ng framework. No? Pero huwag kayong ma- masyadong ma- ma-dishearten pag nakakita tayo ng framework. Para sa mga visual learners na kagaya ko, uh, ito medyo mas naiintindihan ko kung nasaan tayo ngayon. No? So, um, di ba pinakita ko kanina yung MELC? No? So, yung Most Essential Learning Competency. So, isipin nyo siya yung nasa gitna. Ano yung competency na dapat matutunan ng bata? So, ito nga yung nasa likod na to, itong mga nasa likod na to, ito yung mga kailangan natin balansihin. Kung makikita ninyo, sila ay pare-pareho ng sukat. No? So, kasi kailangan magkakabalance sila at magkaka-relate sila. No? Hindi pwedeng yung isa, hindi siya related doon sa, sa isa. So, makikita nyo sa mas malaking box, merong formative assessment, summative assessment, Diagnostic assessment, teacher's role, and student role. Lahat yan ay mangyay, nangyayari sa isang distance learning na ang, ang basehan ay competency. So, balikan natin kanina, di ba? So, naglabas ang DepEd ng MELC, no? So, ito ay competency-based. Ito yung mga kailangan natin uh, ma-achieve, no? So, sa competency na framework na ito, makikita na natin. Huwag yun ang pansinin yung mga synchronous, asynchronous, blended, para hindi tayo ma-stress. No? Ang, ang iisipin lang natin, paano tayo makakalikha gamit ang, ang apat na boxes na yan sa likod ng competencies. No? So kung mapapansin niyo kay teacher, mag identify tayo ng assessment task. Sa baba nun, paano mo or ano ang gagamitin mong tool upang maisakaparan yung assessment. No? Halimbawa, ngayon, gusto ko lamang na malaman, no, through polls yung ginamit. So, gumamit ako ng um, Go Soapbox. Ito ay isang, actually, lumato, no, lumang website to, no, no mga bata-bata pa ako, uh, year 2007, yan, ginagamit ko yan sa, sa classroom. And until now, it's relevant. No? So, hindi dahil ginagamit natin noon, hindi na siya relevant. Hindi natin kailangan laging makipagsabayan sa mga bagong technology or mga bagong app para lamang masabi na yung assessment natin gagawin ay uh, sapat or tama para sa mga bata. No? So, yun yung lagi kong pinopromote. Hindi kailangan tayo mag, magbuhos ng madaling madaming oras kaiisip kung ano yung dapat natin gamitin na tools. Kasi nakita niyo, pantay ang kanilang um, sukat. No? Kailangan may assessment task at kailangan masuportahan siya ng tools na kaya ng batang gamitin maaari niyang ma-access at ganun din ang teacher. Yung naman sa kabila, uh, ang students naman, students role naman nila, kailangan meron silang assessment tools at meron silang interaction. Ano? So, makikita natin yan. Magbibigay ako ng example. So, sana nabigyan ko ng lina o kahit pa paano itong program approach. No? Hindi ito galing sa DepEd. Ha? Ito ay, um, hindi ko rin naman ito original. No? Nakikita niyo naman sa baba um, kung, kung saan ko siya kinuha. No? So, um, 
ito uh, 2017 pa lang pero very relevant siya no na, na isang framework kung paano tayo magiging competency based sa ating distance learning. Yeah. So ano ba yung mga assessment sa distance learning yan? So yeah. uh, ito na yung mga na discuss ko kanina. So may mga pagkakaiba sila kapag enhanced face to face, blended mode. I guess lahat naman tayo ang magiging focus talaga natin is yung online mode. Okay? So yeah. Ah, uh, ito yung halimbawa no, yung kanina na pinakita ko pag wala yung mga nasa labas na na salita no. Ito lang talaga yung dapat nating makita no. Laging nasa taas yung competency galing dun sa milk. Tapos yung nasa kaliwa, ito yung gagawin ni teacher, yung nasa kanan, ito yung mga gusto nating gawin ng students. So kaya teacher's role, student's role. So halimbawa, yan. Uh, ang gusto ko ay, uh, hindi ako naglagay ng competency ha, kasi very generic din naman yung example ko. Kunwari gusto ko sila ay makapag-simulate ng isang technique. Uh, yan. Mga pinag-usapan namin ito sa alternative education kasi meron kaming offering na pivot. No? So, meron, uh, kunwari dressmaking. Ano. So, yung technique kung paano manahe, kunwari. Ano. So, um, ito ay makikita mo talagang basihan na maganda kasi technique eh, di ba? pag nakita mong ginagawa niya no so sa content subjects content subjects uh, assessment may seem um, easier no sa content subject kung yung subject mo content parang akala mo mas madali ang assessment pero actually pare-pareho naman tayo hindi lang talaga tayo sanay or hindi pa kasi talaga natin nasusubukan kung paano lumikha ng um, assessment sa online learning so kung nare gusto mo simulation ng technique makita mo kung paano niya talaga nagagawa no so uh, ano yung pwede mong gawin na ICT na or tools no so pwede ko siyang pagawain ng video dem video demonstration so return demo yung tawag namin sa alternative no sa sa may mga tivet no uh, return demo so magde-demo ako ngayon And then you have to submit a return demo. And there's no other way on how they will be able to submit a return demo other than using a video demonstration. Kasi kapag picture lang, hindi mo makikita yung continuity. So it also has to support yung task na gusto mo. So kung mawari ang competency natin, uh, yung, yung, student ko makapag, uh, yung student ko makapagpakita ng, um, what do you call this, ng uh, tamang running stitch, ano? So, uh, kung output lang yung titignan mo, ito favorite natin lahat to, no? Kung output lang ang titignan natin, um, teka lang ha, medyo na lobat lang yung laptop ko. Okay, give me 20 seconds just to plug it up. Sorry ha, wala na ba kayong choice? Sandaling-sandali lang. So, yo, uh, good afternoon, audience. No, maraming salamat. No? So, while waiting for Miss Jem, uh, yun, Miss Roda, no? Yes, um, sir, sir Franco. Uh, yun, uh, ngayon pa lang, no? uh, hitik na hitik na kagad at ang dami natin mga nakakuha. <laughs> Para akong bumabalik sa, uh, sa class ko sa, sa, sa education, no? Very, although teachers, no, may mga nag-ask dito kanina sa, sa ano natin, sa ating... Um, Uh, stream sa live chat natin na uh, paano daw yung mga modular uh, format. So siguro, uh, abangan lang po natin na sasagot yan ni Miss Jem mamaya kung paano nga ba natin to Kasi yun nga yung ano natin, promise natin na uh, um, inclusive modality yung approaches natin sa mga webinars natin. So hintayin lang natin audience no at ma-deliver ma ni uh, Miss Jem yung uh, paano nga ba natin to i-apply sa ating uh, uh, different modalities. Tsaka, Kamis Sir Franco, na, meron yes, nagko-comment din na yung iba yata hindi nala masyado nababasa yung text ng presentation ni Ms. Jem. Okay lang po yun. Kasi pagkatapos naman nito, tama ba ako, Sir Franco, ma-access naman nila yes. yung recorded na video? Tama ba ako? Yes po. Ma-review ma ma niyo po ulit ito mamaya para mas, mas makita niyo yung mga... Sometimes naglalag yung, ano, yung pag uh, live stream. Oh. Med medyo malapo po. So, audience, balik na po tayo at uh, welcome back po natin si, si Ms. Jem. Ayan. So, ganyan po talaga sa live. Sorry. <laughs> Pasensya na. Ganun talaga sa live. So, para talagang si Miss Jem hindi effect na. Hindi ako nakaprepare na 
dapat nakasaksak yan. So, yung mga, yung tanong kanina, yung sa modular um, learning natin, actually, balikan ko na lang yun ha, pero um, just to give you an idea, kahit naman anong modality yung gamitin natin, kung uh, whether it's modular or um, merong uh, synchronous and asynchronous, um, there will always be a framework that you will, uh, that you may follow. No? So, but in terms of assessment, in terms of writing an assessment, whether it's um, modular based, whether it's asynchronous or synchronous format, yung kagaya ng mga online learning sa amin, ano, or yung ginagamit namin before, no, when I was uh, medyo bata-bata ako, yung mga self-learning kit, no, so ito yung mga mother modular noon, no? self-learning kit, no, so um, yung writing and assessment, uh, yung foundation niya, uh, wala sila halos dapat pinagkaiba. Kasi ang assessment will always begin with either your competency and then later on discuss pa yung objectives para yung nagmumula tayo sa competency papunta tayo sa objectives. Sorry, ang daming technical ano ni si Jen. So, yan. So, uh, that's uh, at least a general idea of yung assessment, why it is, uh, why it's important not only for any modality na sa education in itself. No? So, uh, next is, yeah. So, validity. No? So, kanina yung sa, in, in Filipino, when, when I asked, ano ang wasto? Wasto, uh, nabatayan, ano? So, yeah. So, validity is wasto. No? So, ang key terms lang naman na dapat natin matandaan is that it, it, it has to measure what intent, what it intends to measure and it, it is dependent on the purpose behind the test. Later on, tignan natin, para ko ba malalaman kung valid yung gawa ko, no? So, uh, actually, para sa mga statisticians dyan, ano, calling out sa mga statisticians dyan, uh, yun, meron, uh, statistically speaking, you 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 have a, a formula on how you can get the validity, no? So, paano yun, teacher? Ako, kagaya ko, hindi naman ako nag-measure, nag ano? So, um, may mga ways naman kung paano natin malalaman talaga, hindi talaga yung, yung, yung not the number in itself, but ways on how you know that the test is valid or your assessment is valid. No? So again, um, tests or quizzes, paper and pen, these are only examples of um, assessment na pwede natin gamitin. No? So, yan. so, meron siyang iba't ibang klase. No? So, yan. Para sa mga nagre-research dyan, alam ko medyo familiar kayo dito yung mga construct validity, phase validity, um, content validity. No? So, ang mga dapat lang natin tandaan para malaman natin, mas madali kasi tandaan, kung ano yung hindi dapat. No? Parang sa totoong buhay, minsan mas madali yung alam yung bawal kesa dun sa dapat gawin. No? So, ano yung mga samples ng invalidity no? kapag ikaw ay gumagawa ng assessment? Halimbawa, a reading test meant to measure literacy that is given in a very small font size. No? Gawa ka ng test, no? lalo na ngayon online ang test natin. Or kahit sa modular, or kahit gumagamit tayo ng mga self-learning kit, kapag gumagawa tayo ng test, ang tawag doon, face validity, for example, no, yung tinitignan mo yung test na yun, uh, or yung assessment na yun, um, pero yung yung sitwasyon na ibinigay mo doon sa estudyante, doon sa kumukuha ng test, nakaka-apekto siya doon sa magiging resulta. Kasi gusto mo yung reading test, masukat niya kung naiintindihan niya. Pero ang font size naman na ginamit mo, 4 or 5 or 6, yung palang sa font size, hindi na niya na-achieve yung gusto mong ma-achieve. Kahit yung content is correct, face validity is also another aspect of um, validity. No? So, yan sa example. Another example yan, gagamit ka ng isang test na in English, um, pero yung student mo ay first year niya, kung kunwari na Spanish siya, no, na first year. Na sa, sa school namin, marami kami yung um, iba-ibang lahi na na hindi marunong talaga mag, magsalita ng Filipino. Pero hindi naman pwedeng, hindi sila mag kumuha ng subject na Filipino. So, ang ginagawa namin, binibigyan namin sila ng excuse me, ng ibang paraan kung paano sila uh, matututo ng Filipino. No? So, hindi necessarily naka-mainstream sila. So, mas madali maisip, no? ganito ba ako kapag gumagawa ako ng, ng assessment, uh, 
na iisip ko lang siya agad tapos ginagawa ko lang. So maraming mga uh, dapat tayong matutunan na strategies no. Alam I am sure I am sure you know this already. No? So font size matters, font style matters, color matters like like right now no. I I didn't expect na hindi masyadong readable. So I I'm so sorry kung hindi ganoon ka readable na but you know I I, I will share din naman dito. So yan um uh, so yun uh, face validity pa lang yun, itsura pa lang. Eh, yung content, kailangan. Eksakto, kung ano yung tinuro mo, yun yung kailangan mong sukatin. Ano? So, kaya nga tayo gumagawa ng favorite nito, ng TOS, ng Table of Specifications. Ano? Kasi gusto mo na lahat ng objectives na nakuha mo, na magsusupport dun sa competencies mo, ay valid. Yun yung kasama sa test. For example, you are to create a departmentalized test or, or a summative test. No? Sa katapusan yun, diba? summative kasi. No? Uh, may summative naman tayo, mga quarterly exams, pero kasi parang mga small summative lang yun. Ano? So, uh, meron tayong mga achievement test, etc. No? Sa dulo natin, kunwari, kung natuto ba talaga sila. Yeah. So, yung mga summative uh, test. Yung mga, uh, mostly, sila yung ginagamitan ng mga um, statistical analysis yung mga departmental or standardized tests. Yan. And then, yan. so, ha, uh, threats to validity, pati pala validity, may threats. Ano? So, um, the way we give instructional procedures, the way we administer, no? and scoring procedures, and student characteristics are very important to validity para malaman natin, no, kailangan mat makita natin ang lahat ng facets na ito no para maiwasan natin na maging invalid yung ginawa nating assessment. Okay? And then how do we improve validity no? Kasi paano ko naman magagawa eh, kung formative lang naman? Ang formative assessment paano ko magagawa yun kapag ganun or summative assessment no? So um una examine your test content no siguraduhin natin na mag nagsusuport talaga siya ng ng mga naituro natin. Kagaya nung example ko kanina kapag summative test. Kapag, uh, ito yung favorite itanong ng bata kapag may test sa dulo na summative test. Yung, I mean, at the end of the school year. No? Uh, may isang coverage ba first to fourth quarter? No? So, kunwari ang sasagot mo naman, yes. No? Kasi syempre, yun ang expectation sa summative. Pero, ang nasa test mo, karamihan nandun lang sa fourth quarter. So, nandun lang sa second quarter. So, it has to be distributed um, fairly. Kaya tayo gumagamit ng table of specifications other than yung sa Bloom's Taxonomy kasi yun yung mga nakikita natin doon na types of questions sa ating TOS. No? So, examine the content. Yung bang ine-examine, yung bang ginagawan mo ng assessment, ito talaga yung binigay mo na content. No? So, another one is examine the cognitive process. No? So, yung content, Ah, uh, ito yung alam niyo no, yung itinuro niyo and then yung cognitive process yung sa bata, 'di ba? So ah uh, Yeah, so ito ba yung nasa objectives mo? No? So generally yun yung sa cognitive process. Ito ba talaga yung nilagay mo na sa 'di ba meron tayong um, tatlong klaseng objectives, no? So ah uh, ah uh, ko na yata. So may, kung ano yung tatlo kla cognitive affective and psychomotor sorry wala akong notes pa yan cognitive affective and psychomotor so very important yung cognitive process and then examine the results of other assessment so pwede mo naman natin i-compare yung yung score nila so para kapag may nakita tayo for example at one point na uh, lalo na kung pre-test and, and post-test no maganda magandang mag-examine pre-test and post-test no? nag-improve sila. And then um, towards the end or kapag siguro sa middle ng quarter ano, pwede tayo mag-examine ng mga test results no. Um kunwari um itong batang to, si batang A, uh, laging okay yung scores niya pero at one point biglang mababa. So maraming dahilan kung bakit siya biglang tumaba. Pwede rin namang uh, mababa siya lagi pero tumaas. So marami ring dahilan kung bakit siya tumaas. Okay, so, yung mga ganon, these are flags for us, no? Kailangan natin, uh, uh, ang dami talaga natin gagawin, no? Sa part pa lang ng preparation, no? Lalo na kapag assessment, imagine mo, titignan mo pa sila isa-isa, no? Kung, kung natututo ba talaga sila, no? So, kasi yon mahalaga na ma-realize natin 
at ng mga bata kagaya nung balikan ko kanina di ba kapag uh, why assessment is very important to teachers because this gives us data doon sa isang bata pa lang yun this gives us data uh, if uh, we were able to de- we were able to use the right strategies no to deliver the to deliver the content And of course, we have to make sure that the assessment is fair to students of all backgrounds. So, kagaya sa amin, ano, um, sa alternative education, uh, mainstream kami, may deaf, no? So, uh, syempre, ano, nagpapabibo ako before, gusto ko matuto sila makagawa or makalikha ng isang uh, video project. No? So, uh, naglalaboratory naman sila, so tinanggal ko na yung idea na hindi equal yung kanilang gamit, no? Uh, ang hindi ko ang hindi ko na realize is um, hindi nga pala lahat sila nakakapakinig so or nakakarinig so paano nga naman nila maiintindihan ang music element no or audio element paano yung paano kapag ganun no? so uh, yon isa yon sa mga naging uh, pagkakamali ko noon na nais kong i-improve lagi no so yung inclusivity no so yung assessment dapat ano siya inclusive of all uh, background ng ng students natin. Yeah. Feeling ko kulang na sa time. Ayan. So anyway, so that's validity. How about reliability? So for reliability, um interrelated ba or or I mean, um pwede bang pagpalitan yung mga salitang validity and reliability? Actually hindi, no? So kasi magkaiba naman talaga sila ng ng meaning pero para silang magpinsan hindi rin naman magkapatid no so uh, reliable uh, ang reliability naman ito yung uh, maaasahan ano so kung kanina yung valid ay tama tama yung sinusukat ang reliability uh, refers to the consistency of results no so kunwari ang isang bata na nagtake ng test na ganito na ito ang competency kapag inulit niya yon yun pa rin ang magiging score niya no yun so yun yung um, reliability. So, may statistical um, formula din kung paano natin makukuha na reliable ang ang isang uh, assessment natin. Ano? So, um, eh, pwede sila, parang ko ba sasabihin na, hindi dahil reliable ang ang assessment mo, valid siya. No? So, um, pwede pa rin silang tignan sa magkaibang paraan. So, Ito yan. So, how do we improve? Uh, okay. Ten minutes na lang pala ako. Sorry. So, how do we improve reliability? No? So, you have to give clear and specific. These are only some um, strategies. No? So, um, clear and specific rubrics. Yan. So, lalo na sa, sa mga um, performance subjects. No? Lagi natin itong ginagamit ang rubric. So, I guess this one is something that would be very useful also kung... Um, kung kahit anong modality ang gamit natin, whether you're modular, whether you're um, a printed self-learning kit, whether you're online, rubric is one of the best um, form of uh, uh, reliable assessment. No? Pinapakita natin, nagsaset tayo ng standard kung ano yung mga dapat na, na makamit nila para ito yung score na makuha nila. No? So, clear and specific rubrics. No? Uh, kagaya kanina, no? paano ba natin malalaman kung gusto tayo ng isang tao Binibigyan ka niya ng pagkain. Pero ilang beses? Kapag sampung beses sa isang linggo, gustong gusto ka niya. Kapag ito naman, limang beses lamang sa isang linggo, gusto ka lang niya. Pero kapag isang beses lang, nag-a-assume ka lang na gusto ka niya. So, yun yung mga maaring nating batayan uh, sa sa rubric. No? So, mabibigyan natin ng sukat para maintindihan ng mga mag-aaral na bago nila gawin. So, hindi natin ito binibigay sa katapusan. Ha? Kailangan, kapag sa simula pa lang, ito yung gagawin mong assessment. Ito ngayon ang, ang magiging patayan kung paano ka makakakuha ng mga gradong ganito. No? So, kailangan sa simula pa lang ibinibigay na natin yun. We have to give clear instructions. Kagaya kanina, sabi ko, um, mag-join kayo using the join code. No? So, alam ko yung iba magtatanong agad, may dash ba? Wala bang dash? So, ah, uh, make it as simple as possible no so um hindi kailangan isang buong paragraph ang ang instruction kung kaya naman ng ng uh, one sentence lang ano so uh yun kailangan yun and then of course yung isa sa pinakamahalaga para ng reliability send feed seek feedback no hindi lamang sa mga mag-aaral 
kaya tayo nagpapa-check sa ating mga um, subject coordinator no kasi gusto natin malaman tama ba yung ginawa natin reliable ba so kailangan natin mag-seek ng feedback okay? ano naman yung mga challenges na pwede nating ma-encounter kapag tayo ay gumagawa ng assessment no para sa distance learning no so isa doon uh, yan para sa online yan yung technical or connectivity no so yan kagaya ko hindi ako masyadong na parang uh, hindi ko na isip yan hindi ako naka-prepare maglolobat na pala no so yung mga students natin for all we know nahihirapan din silang mag uh, mag-connect no to have connection they are also experiencing similar um, situation as ours no hindi lang si teacher ang nahihirapan even the students so bakit ito challenge sa assessment kapag yung assessment na ipinapagawa natin dapat full online no Kumare mag online quiz tayo, dapat naka 30 minutes online siya. Eh yung load ng bata, uh, good for 15 minutes lang. Kumare lang. I'm just giving out examples. So, so um ito ay magiging isang challenge hindi lamang sa bata kung hindi para sa ating mga guro kasi kailangan nating isipin. Ano ba yung kakayahan ng mga estudyante ko or ng mga mag-aaral na mapupunta sa akin in terms of sa pagtake ng online quiz. Halimbawa, no? So, yan. Sa amin, um, yung night school namin, ang aming synchronous sessions uh, sa isang gabi, uh, meron lamang sila uh, dalawang, uh, dalawang to 30 minutes or uh, 60 minutes to 90 minutes lang. Yun lang yung kailangan na isagay nila online. No? So, ang preparation namin ay online at saka asynchronous. No? So, yan. Ang, uh, kasi nga, inaasahan na namin na marami talagang magkakaroon ng connectivity problem kasi ang pinili naming modality ay synchronous asynchronous no so hindi na, hindi namin um uh, hindi kami nagbank on dun sa mga printed or self learning kit kasi hindi masusuport ng aming paaralan na merong makakapagpadala or merong makakapagbigay sa mga bata no so mas Para sa amin, uh, mas ipinareha namin siya doon sa day school namin. Kaya kami ay kumamit ng online. No? So, um, isa siguro sa, uh, dahil ito ay mission school ng Lasal, uh, uh, it, isa ito sa pinag, medyo pinaglaanan actually nila no, ng, ng, ng uh, budget. No? So, para makatulong kami sa mga mag-aaral. Meron pa rin kaming alternative learning system. No? Iba pa ito doon sa mga TVET programs. No? So, ganun din maaari ang mga ma-encounter natin ano, sa, sa mga uh, yung may mga mga estudyante na maaaring kapareho yung uh, sitwasyon doon sa amin. No? So, uh, tapos, uh, isa pang challenge sa ating mga guro, yung cheating mindset. No? So, lagi nating iisipin, uh, paano yun kung hindi siya yung gumawa? Paano yun kung habang nag-online quiz kami, nagtitingin siya ng notes um, as an educational technology coordinator no i have always been asked this several times no how can i improve the system yung online system natin without the students really um copying answers or opening others so ang dami ang dami daming paraan pwede kang gumamit ng ibang browser pwede kang gumamit ng uh, shuffling ng questions etc pero Paano kung gumamit naman yung student ng iba pang device para naman picturean niya yun, no? There's really no way for us to to natigilan yung mga ganitong pangyayari. Kaya kung ikaw ay gumagawa ng assessment, siguro mas maganda na iwasan natin isipin na ang mga ating mag-aaral ay magbandaraya. Okay? So, siguro ang una nating maaaring um, uh, iparating sa kanila ay uh, sila ay ating pinagtitiwalaan. No? So, at saka sa online learning or sa distance learning or kahit sa modular or ano, ang, ang mga knowledge tests or mga multiple choice tests, um, not necessarily knowledge pero multiple choice, uh, hindi siya ganun ka, kagamit ano? kapag mga ganit, sa ganitong panahon kasi um, uh, maraming ang ma, maraming sitwasyon na maaaring pagdaanan ng isang ang isang bata. No? So, kung ang iniisip lang natin ay sila ay mandaraya, 
So baka naman mas maganda kapag ang tinanong mo na lang ay essay, no? Kunyari ganun. Ah, uh, miss pwede 'yan sa mga upper grades. Paano naman yung mga lower grades? No? So sa lower grades actually hindi naman cheating mindset ang iniisip natin. Ang ayaw natin is yung iniisip natin na yung magulang ang gagawa nung ano, no? Kasi maraming ganun, no? Para yung magulang yung mag mag accomplish nung nung assessment ano in, in in order for them to to submit ano so paano yung ganon so uh, para dun sa mga mapapalad na magkakaroon ng mga synchronous session ano dito maganda yung mga um, performance based halimbawa ang gusto lang naman natin makapagpakilala yung bata yun lang naman ang competency natin na makapagsalita ang bata sa uh, in straight filipino for example makapagpakilala ng sarili niya gamit ang salita or uh, uh, yung language na Filipino. So, pwede natin siguro silang tanongin isa-isa kung nagagawa nila kasi ito, maaari silang i-coach ng magulang pero sila, sila talaga yung magpe-perform, no? So, there's no other way for for the parents to to perform it other than that. No? So, and um siguro one thing that I can share, no, for for those who will be teaching in the lower grades, always expect that, you know, the parents will always be there watching. So, wag na natin isipin na dapat kasi wala yung mga magulang, no? So, we are also parents, no? Yung mga um, I, I'm sure karamihan sa ating mga audiences ay magulang, no? So, sabi nga nung isang meme na nakita ko, um, yung anak ko yung in-enroll ko, pero bakit parang ako yung naka-enroll, no? So, we we always have that ano, um aspect in us, no? Bilang magulang na talagang nandun ka gagabay ka. So bilang isang guro, i-expect mo na 'yon, ano? Hindi 'wag mo nang tanggalin yung idea na wala sila lang diyan. And most kaya most especially when you are writing your assessment, no? Ah, uh, dapat yung linaw pa lang ng direction, kailangan yung bata mismo makuha niya. Okay? So bata pa lang or yung yung maiintindihan ng bata yung vocabulary na ginagamit natin. Another challenge is our grading system no dito sa Pilipinas no where we uh, ang gamit natin uh, I don't know kung K-pop pa ba or ano um kapag may grading system tayo that's mostly based on numerics no so written works uh, dapat meron kang quiz na tatlo dapat meron kang ano so this is also a challenge for us na kasi alam natin na hindi talaga ganun sana yung para masupat natin kung natuto yung isang bata pero dahil ang grading system natin ganito yung itinutulak minsan napipilitan tayo na ganito na lang din yung gawin natin ano so napaka-challenging yan para sa isang teacher lalo na sa distance learning no? and of course yung time management so when you are writing your assessment talaga uh, uh, it will really take some time no? na na magawa ito no? so hindi siya isang upuan lang madalas no? and Um, hindi kasi tayo talaga uh, sanay na ang ginagawa natin uh, yung nauuna yung assessment, nauuna yung assessment uh, sa simula pa lang alam mo na kung ano yung gusto nilang gusto natin ma-achieve nila na sa dulo no. I'm sure most of the teachers um, kagaya ko na hindi pa talaga ako sanay na ganun yung naiisip ko. Naiisip ko yung katapusan bago magsimula no. So Ah, uh, 'yun kailangan ma, ma ano natin ngayon, ma, ma talagang lahat ma-invite natin. So, sa simula pa lang, alam mo na kung ano yung gusto nila ma-achieve para yung sunod-sunod na competencies na gagawin nila ay magsusuport lahat doon sa pinaka assessment mo sa dulo, no? So, ayan. 'Yan ang mga challenges. And then, what are sample strategies na no, in crafting um, assessments for distance learning? So, Um, know your objectives and then the proper assessment. So, so kung ang assessment mo ay um, write a simple sentence, pero ang assessment mo ay ma, ma, uh, ang assessment mo ay orally they they um, uh, uh, they they speak a sentence, no? so or they say a sentence. Ah, uh, hindi siya magkamatch. No, kailangan magkamatch yung objectives natin and assessment natin. So balikan natin yung framework, no? So kung ang competency natin ay ganito, you have to break it down to objectives. Lalo na ngayon na ang schedule natin dapat um uh, sa schedule natin dapat mas naka-organize, no? Hindi kagaya sa face to face, minsan pwede ka pang mag-skip kasi alam mo makikita mo naman sila ulit kina mo asal. But but right now really time is very essential, no? Time is not something na hindi natin ma- uh, sorry. 
time is not something na pwede nating mai uh, you know yung, yung palagpasen ano so yan uh, objective assessment is very important another one is to set expectations kagaya nung sa rubric kanina doon pa lang nakikita na ng bata so kung ang mga gagawin natin ito na yung mga kadugtong na so um uh, ang isa sa mga pina kay uh, ginagamit na type of assessment for distance learning ay ang mga performance based, competency competency based at saka problem based no. So ito yung mga halimbawa ng assessments na pwede nating gamitin pero uh, ito's usually summative to no. Hindi ka naman magbibigay ng performance task um, every every week no kasi ang expectation sa atin ang performance task is a combination of um skills that they have learned and then they apply Uh, in one performance task. No? So, uh, similarly with competency-based and problem-based, hindi siya pwedeng every week isa. No? So, kailangan you put together, you know, competencies, yung mga ganun. So, um, these are summative, mostly summative. Kaya nga sa grading system natin, minsan mas malaki talaga yung performance task. No? So, yun. Um, some strategies lang, uh, when you create performance-based, best that um, these are um, something related to 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 the to, to our students ano so yeah na na na, na isasabuhay nila kaya nila isabuhay yung yung mga gusto natin or nais natin ipagawa sa kanila no so sa atin mostly competency based kasi naka ang gamit natin yung um, sa milk pero uh, performance based ito ay matagal naman na natin tong ginagamit no sa sa deaf ed most especially na nag K-pop na tayo no Problem based, maganda to lalo na sa mga higher level kasi ang mga makukuha talaga natin ng mga output nila is yung um, minsan hindi natin na imagine na ganun yung naiisip nila no so um, beyond the the quizzes that we make na mga 10 items ano pero kapag sila pala pinasagot natin no ng ng mga uh, or pinagawa natin ng mga hindi research papers mga uh, reflection papers mga um, Uh, solution papers, mga presentation papers, no? Um, nagkakaroon pala siya ng ibang pananaw, no? Uh, for all we know, may marami tayong mga students na mas nagkakaroon ng interest kapag ang tinatanong natin sa kanila ay base sa sa karanasan nila, base sa sarili nila, no? So, sa sarili nilang pag-iisip, binibigyan natin halaga kung ano yung naiisip nila. Kaya dapat, magkaroon tayo ng batayan kung paano natin ito ma-check, no? Kaya, no? May rubric ka sa bawat... Uh, output na pinagagawa natin sa kanila. Ah, and then, uh, so, yun yung mga pwede natin gawin na type of assessment. Pero how would you know that um, may quality uh, quality assessment? Ano? So, um, use Uh, use multiple methods of assessment. So, like, uh, sa isang competency, hindi naman necessarily isa lang yung gagawin natin assessment. Ano? So, ayun. Sa mga nagre-research, di ba, lagi natin ginagamit yung triangulation. Ano? So, meron kang uh, FGD, meron kang um, survey questionnaire, meron kang, uh, uh, ano pa bang ginagamit natin? Ano? Survey questionnaire. Wait lang, nag-iisip ako ng isa. O, oh, yun. Para... Uh, oh, mga ano uh, expert validation pwede naman kasi siyang ano so kapag may expert validation ka may triangulation ka na valid na yung mga ginawa mo reliable na yung result no so ganun din naman sa assessment sa sa ginagawa natin sa klase no so hindi lamang tayo nakapaggawa ng quiz na 1 to 10 meron ka pang ginawa na isa pang assessment no gumamit ka ng iba-ibang klasing assessment para lang masiguro na talagang ito ay Uh, nakatulong or natutunan nila. No? So, another one, uh, yun nga, use alternative methods. So, kagaya ng example kanina, hindi necessarily laging ganito lang. So, yan. But, just a reminder, um, I know you are all very creative, pero um, it it will take some time for our students to digest everything. Kunwari sa isang quarter, ikaw nagpagawa ka ng performance task. Yung kabila naman na subject nagpagawa ng problem-based um, task. Yung kabila naman ganito. So, um, yung imagine how how our students will be, no, kapag iba-iba rin yung na-experience nila. No? More so, kapag mas mga bata. No? So, kaya dapat napakahalaga na nakikipag-articulation tayo kung ano yung mga klase ng assessment na nagagawa nila. Kunwari ang test natin sa lower grades ay um, uh, 
sa for example sa math ano one plus one etc ano pero sa reading pala hindi pala nila alam pa or sa comprehension wala pa pala silang alam sa numerals no sa sa number three or ano so um they they have they also have to match no so hindi lang yung yung ang iisipin natin yung subject natin so there's there's always gonna be um vertical articulation and horizontal articulation so and lastly of course we we have to involve our students no so ang um, tanong natin uh, okay ba yung uh, yung assessment um, nakatulong ba sa kanila no or next time ano ba yung sa tingin niyo mas mas magiging okay no para sa atin no so or or other than that no so we ask them uh, sa tingin niyo kailan ba talaga nila ma masasubmit no yung mga pinagagawa natin kunwari kasi uh, lalo na yung mga mahilig magpagawa ng performance task towards the end no tapos bibigyan lang natin sila ng two weeks para i-accomplish yun Uh, kasi akala natin tayo lang ang gumagawa nun, pero lahat pala ng limang subjects ganun yung ginawa so the burden now is on the student so or, or on the student so kailangan um, tayo aware din tayo sa nangyayari sa mga bata no let's involve them and of course yung timing is really very important so yan we will also try to emphasize with our students okay. yan yun how we can make quality assessments for um, distance learning. And then, um, yeah, so, I sorry, yeah. So, formative assessments, so yung kanina yung mga examples natin, mga summative, no? Pero yung mga, uh, ang formative assessment, yan, isa sa mga pinaka-favorite ko na ginagawa nung nagtuturo pa ako, no? So, um, maaari nyo pa rin itong gawin, kagaya ngayon, yung ginawa ko kanina, those, uh, yun ay isa lamang halimbawa, no? Kapag nagpapapol tayo, no? Uh, questions no so um you can also use tools that fit the purpose kunwari gusto mong malaman yes or no yan no? mga polling no? so collect evidences over time so those are formative assessment uh, ask them for feedback um like towards the end for example you can just simply ask them um na confuse ba kayo or mas naintindihan niyo ba yung lesson etc and in the moment checks you know i would have loved to ask you right now kung, kung okay pa ba kayo Um, kaya lang, yan, medyo technically challenge pa ako sa mga ganito, sa streaming. Ano. So, yan. In the moment, checks, these are very important, especially for distance learning. No? So, we don't always expect na kahit nakikinig siya, for example, lalo na kapag naka-off ang camera, for example, um, we are not sure if they they are still you know interested in what you are saying. No? So, um, most importantly, you have personal conversation, no? but you have to be careful, no? So, personal conversation sometimes sways us, no? The, to, towards on the emotional side, no? So, um, you have to be careful as teachers, no? Kasi ngayon, lalo na ngayon, ang paraan lamang ng mga estudyante natin para ma-reach tayo. Pwede ka nila email, pwede ka nila i-chat, no? Sa Facebook, kasi friends mo sila. E may tanong sila or um, gusto nilang mag- mag-share ng experience nila. So, we have to be very careful. Though it is an important also aspect you know, formative assessment that we give uh, or, or offer them yung personal conversation, uh, yun lang. Um, binibigyan ko lang din kayo ng isang uh, parang part na ito ay dapat rin natin pag-ingatan, ano? lalo na ngayon, lalo na ngayong online learning. Check students' well-being, kung okay pa ba sila, lalo na kung bago nagsisimula. And of course, use the data in the formative assessment. So kung dito pa lang sa skill na to, mas marami nang hindi nakakuha, siguro mas maganda kapag, uh, kapag uh, mag-reteach tayo. No? So hindi mo hihintayin yung summative. Dito pa lang sa mga formative, malalaman mo na. No? So gamitin natin yung mga data na nakukuha natin. Hindi yung para lang masabi kung nag-formative assessment ako. Um, uh, And then I move on to the next note. So because these are data that will help you. Okay. So you know I'm on my last uh, last slide. Sorry, ha, over time yata. So um, uh, why is it important to use validity and reliability? No. So we every educator, every teacher should always have validity and reliability in the data. So that um, kahit wala ako statistically, no, pwede ko pa rin siyang. I mean I can't have I, i can't always have yung statistics no yung numbers no pero dapat aware pa din ako doon sa mga data na nakukuha ko at dapat um 
kaya kong mag-conclude by looking at merely yung results no kanilang um, results. I'm saying results because hindi naman lahat dapat numeric lang yung magiging basis natin. Ano? Other than the numeric, tingnan din natin yung kanyang naging output. Bakit ganon yung kinalabasan? No? So, um, teachers' intuition, research, and collaboration with our other um, teacher partners. Ano? So, this can help us have yung validity and reliability. No? And of course, yan. Sorry. Yeah, an understanding of validity and reliability allows educators to make decisions that improve the lives of their students both academically and socially as these concepts teach educators how to qualify, quantify the abstract goals. So sa kanila kasi hindi talaga naman nila na hindi talaga nila na nakikita yung competencies na ito yung dapat nila mag-achieve, no? So sa kanila ano yan, hindi hindi yun ang pagtingin nila. Ang hinihintay lang nila nagtuturo lamang tayo. Pero kapag alam natin yung validity and reliability, nakakatulong ito upang tayo makapag-desisyon ng tama sa mga susunod na tatahakod pa na dun sa subject natin. Okay? And yun, on my last slide, um, you know, this is something that I want to share. No? So, tayo as teachers, um, nabigla tayo lahat sa nangyari ngayon. You know, but um, at talagang hinulat tayo kasi hindi, hindi hindi pwedeng hindi tayo matuto sa panahon ngayon. Ano? So, sa online learning technologies, um, isasama ko na lang din yung iba, yung mga hindi, lalo na kapag hindi ka module writer, no? it gives you a different, ano, kapag ang kinasanayan natin gawin ay yung mga daily lesson plan logs, etc. Ano? So, it's a bit different and we have to upscale. There's, there's really not nowhere to go but to, to this, ano, uh, um, track no so in order for us to continue moving forward with education because we we don't want our students to really stop learning so tayo mismo ganun din so let us be the students that we want to be kung ang gusto natin lagi matuto yung mga bata tayo rin dapat bilang mga guro kaya alam ko kasama namin kayo ngayon uh, gusto talaga nating matuto para mabigyan sila ng mga uh, mas mga magaganda na paraan ng pagkakatuto, lalo na sa distance learning. So, that ends my presentation. Uh, sorry over time. Yan, ayan. So. Ayan, maraming salamat, Ms. Graham. Thank you. Maraming salamat po. Alam mo, Ms. Roda, no, kung sa to lang, kung ganito ang overtime na, mga bagay na mag-overtime, gusto kong gusto okay kong mag-overtime. Okay na okay tayo mag-overtime dito. Parang um, puno-puno so, na ako ng latch, may dessert yeah. pa. <laughs> yes, yes. So, uh, Ms. Roda, maraming salamat po ulit uh, for... for um, sharing your expertise uh, kanina nakita ko yung yung um, yung yung live chat natin na eh, medyo nag uh, umuulan na ng ng papasalamat sa sa sharing niyo po so pero audience no alam ko po marami kayong mga tanong na gusto pang sabihin kay Miss Jem at magkakaroon po tayo ng chance to do that during our question and answer so paki-reserve yes. lang po at um uh, antabayan uh, natin ang mga kasagutan ni Miss Jem sa inyong mga katanungan so Miss Jem uh, magpapaalam muna po kami sa inyo no at uh, habang uh, lilipat tayo sa ating next um, speaker po so uh, bye Miss Jem and uh, we'll see you later sa ating uh, question and answer so Ah, uh, Miss Roda. Yes, yeah, uh, Sir Franco. Kumusta? Yeah, kumusta? Kumusta ang ating uh, uh, so ano yung pinaka tumatak sa dito? Sabi ko kasi busog na busog ako eh. Pero siguro so, uh, marami ako na rinig na terms, mga terminologies, mga definitions of terms. Pero isa sa pinaka tumatak sa isip ko talaga na ako din din ako naniniwala. Whatever we do, whether we are doing it online or face to face, we really have to trust our students. Kasi kahit na anong gawin nating assessment, kung lagi tayong may doubt sa kanila, hindi magiging successful yung lahat ng pinaplano natin para sa kanila. So I think for me, that's number one. We have to trust our pupils na kapag binigyan natin sila ng anumang bagay, whether assessment man yan or kahit simple activities, we have to trust them that they will really try their best to do it on their own. Correct. And then from Madam. there, mararamdaman kasi nila yun if they if the teachers trust them, magkakaroon mm -hmm. sila ng kumpiyansa sa sarili nila. Ayun yes, na. totoo, totoo Miss Rodo. Na lalo na ngayon sa distance learning, yung wala kayong physical interaction, okay. like sobrang laking challenge niyan sa ating lahat na kasi yung 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 in a face to face interaction, mas madaling um mag mag-establish ng rapport, eh, 'di ba? Yung mag-establish ng Correct. trust, mag-establish uh -huh. ng relationship. Pero pag hindi tayo ngayon sa distance learning, parang 
uh, so paano? So paano natin ito gagawin? So yun yung pinakamalaking yeah. challenge. Pero again, sabi nga ni Ms. Roda, uh, viewers, uh, participants, we love to trust. Okay? So kailangan natin siyang i-cultivate kasi wala naman walang precedent sa case na to. So, ibig sabihin, yes. lahat tayo, our students, our, our, as teachers, are all new in this situation. Ako naman, Miss Ro- Miss Roda, dalawa yung pinaka tumatak sa akin sa presentation ni Miss uh, Miss Jem. Number one, na pag nag-iisip tayo ng assessments, kailangan lagi pa rin natin iniisip yung mga estudyante natin. So, um, we, we always go back to them. Okay, so ano yung context nila, ano yung, um, uh, ano yung natu- natutunan nila, etc. Kaya nga, dun sa presentation ni Miss Jem kanina, yung concept ng authentic um, uh, learning or uh, assessments, kung saan nakabase sa context ng students, napakaganda po na yung mga problem-based um, uh, assessments, napakaganda pong gamitin yan sa distance learning. And second, siguro, Miss, Miss Roda, ano, yung, yung idea ng um, pag nagka-craft tayo ng assessments natin, kailangan naka-anchor siya uh, fully dun sa ating mga objectives. Kaya kung meron yes, tayong MLC or... Yes, kasi yun basis natin. Yes. Yeah. So talagang laging i- i- um, i-align natin. So kailangan lagi tayong gumagawa ng katawag ng mga matrix or horizontal um, uh, comparisons para ma-locate talaga natin properly ang ating mga assessments. So, yun. So, maraming salamat po ulit, no? Um, uh, ngayon, uh, teachers, magkakaroon lang tayo ng five-minute short break lang, no? Uh, Makapag-water break at CR break lang muna tayo. Madigest lang natin, po- natin lahat. Yes, madigest <laughs> lang natin. Kasi itong next speaker natin ay magbibigay pa ng mas, mas, mas hitik ulit na, na discussion on crafting valid and reliable assessments. So, yes, uh, sir, viewers, uh, equally please... Equally uh, talented speaker, di ba? Yes, okay. So, um, Steve, um, tune lang po. Uh, while we're at it, um, viewers, may we ask that you also share this... Um, live stream to your um, timelines para po makapag-invite pa tayo ng mga teachers. Uh, baka na late lang sila or na, na-miss nila or nakalimutan nila ngayon itong uh, live event natin. So maraming salamat po and we'll be back in five minutes. See you later! You, you want this or you want to keep for yours? Oh, yeah. You want this or you want to keep for yours?
Okay. Okay, so uh, well, hey, welcome back. So, I'm right. We're back. <laughs> so, maraming salamat po ulit and again, thank you for staying. So, uh, welcome back to our um to our um, second part ng ating uh, webinar series for today. So, um siguro gati patagalin no. Introduce na natin agad ang ating uh, ang ating speaker, okay, for the second part. Okay? Um yes, sir, so, no. Um Okay. Ah, itong next speaker natin na napakalapit sa sa akin kasi number one, nakasama ko siya magtrabaho sa sa Savior School, okay? At ngayon, um uh, magkasama rin kami ulit sa sa Ateneo, okay? Uh, bilang ako part-timer ako sa Ateneo. So, uh, nasa isang community ulit kami ng ng, ng educators. Okay? So, uh, for our second part, let's uh we'll, we'll be having uh, Mr. Galvin Mo, okay? Assistant Director of Ateneo Salt Institute. Uh, for those who will be asking, uh what's the uh, Salt Institute of uh, Ateneo. Ito po yung basically nag-take care or nag-facilitate uh, ng training uh, faculty development ng uh, mga teachers and faculty ng, at faculty and staff ng Ateneo. Okay, so medyo, lalo na ngayon, uh, Ms. Roda, no, napakalaki ng ginagampan ng role niya. Sobrang busy po nito ngayon. And swerte lang ako na nakasingit ako sa kanyang napaka-busy okay, schedule. Siya ngayon. Yes, kasi siyempre, imagine natin si Ms. Roda, no? sila yung nag, nag-aayos ng, ano, ng online distance learning ng buong mm-hmm. Ateneo. So from university level, so lahat ng mga teachers din train nila. Sobrang laki nung, nung task na ginagawa ngayon, yeah. Sir Galvin. No? Uh, I used to call him Sir, Sir Galvin. Ayaw niya magpatawag sa akin ng Sir Galvin kasi magka-colleague daw kami. Pero sabi ko nga, sobrang nililook up ko kasi itong tao na to ever since nasa savior siya. So, Ever since then, Sir Galvin talaga yung tawag ko sa kanya. So, audience, no? Um, pwede nyo rin po siyang tawagin as uh, Sir Galvin. Napakabait pong tao nito. Okay, so let's uh, welcome uh, our second speaker. So, with us, um, Mr. Galvin Mo. Yan. Hey, good afternoon, sir. Hi, good afternoon. Sir Gal- Yan, Sir Very Galvin, good afternoon. Yes, yes sir, okay. loud and clear. Loud and clear, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, four o'clock na po, no? And uh, talagang, ano talaga, believe talaga ako sa mga teachers dahil... 
Uh, tayo lang yata yung nag-professional development ng Sabado ng 4pm. <laughs> At hindi na nanonood ng Netflix, di ba? <laughs> Oo, oh, yung hindi natatapos yung mag- Monday to Friday na trabaho natin. Tapos Saturday, oh. meron pa tayong mga webinar. Walang, walang, walang weekend sa natin na natin. <laughs> oh, Correct, Sir Galvin, Miss Roda. No? Kaya sa sabi ng mga, t- ng mga ibang tao na gumaan ng trabaho ng mga teachers during this um uh, Uh, shift to distance learning, naku, nagkakamali mas, po tayong lahat. Dumami. Okay, mas dumami po ang kailangan namin gawin. Okay? So, Sir Galvin, no, um, we think we could uh, ready start with your, with your presentation for this afternoon. Okay? Uh, good afternoon. Uh, una sa lahat, no, uh, thank you kay Teacher Jem. Uh, I really learned a lot myself. Tulad ng sabi niya dun sa simula ng presentation niya, talagang parang review siya no, na naalala ko yung mga graduate classes ko. Uh, and buwabalik-balik lahat ng mga hindi na natin pinapansin siguro na ginagawa natin bilang guro. Uh, pero parang nabalik yung vocabulary of what we need to think about when we think about valid and reliable assessments. So, uh, I requested Franco to help me out here. I'd like to begin with just a short exercise. Tulad ng ginawa ni uh, Teacher Jem a while ago, we'll try to make this a little interactive to begin with. Uh, maybe also as a breaker uh, between the first talk and the second talk. So, what I'd like to do in the next few minutes is just to Uh, ask a question uh, through another tool that we're going to use. It's called Mentimeter. No? So uh, the instructions are, and please don't do this yet. I'll give you some instructions and then I'll tell you when to start. Uh, if you have access to a browser, uh, if you can switch to a browser for a moment, uh, this time, kanina, di ba doon tayo sa Go Soapbox? Uh, this time naman, I'd like you to go to menti.com. So M-E-N-T-I.com. Uh, and then, pag hiningan kayo ng code, ilagay niyo yung code na 630045. Now, uh, what are you going to do? Uh, I'd like to start with just asking you about this particular question. Uh, a while ago, when we were talking about the things that we picked up from uh, Teacher Jen, uh, I liked how the conversation led to really thinking about what is it like from the student's perspective. So I'd like to begin that way. You know, that uh, What are three words that you think come to mind when a student hears the word assessment? Or for example, pag nag-announce kayo na may assessment tayo, uh, what are three words that come to mind that you think they will immediately think about? Me? Now, if I, I noticed in chat a while ago that some of you might have internet connectivity problems. So no pressure. Um, if you can participate in the Mentimeter activity, go ahead. If not, you can also put your words over chat kasi makikita rin naman natin. No? So, Uh, we'll give you a few minutes, siguro mga one minute para mag-submit ng tatlong word. Uh, and then I'll also look at the words over chat as in case some people aren't able to submit here. So again, the tool that we're using here is Mentimeter. Uh, if you haven't done it yet, just go to a browser just like a while ago. Go to menti.com and then enter the code 630045. Yeah. So I can see we already got 22 responses. I'll give you a few minutes, uh, maybe a minute or two, just to contribute to our word cloud. And again, no pressure. Dun sa mga naka-mobile, na medyo mahirap mag-switch to the browser, iligay niyo yung words niyo sa chat para makita ko rin. Salamat. So babasahin ko yung mga words sa chat para at least makita rin natin sila. Test, no? exam, anxious, no? performance, quiz, quiz, okay? Exam, test, quiz, no? Uh, so for those who are looking at the screen right now, uh, if it's your first time to see a Mentimeter activity, what we're building here together is a word cloud. And the way to interpret this is to watch out for the bigger words. No? So the bigger the word, that means more people submitted exactly the same word. So it won't become bigger if, for example, there's a variation in how you submitted the word. So uh, as we can see our word cloud evolving, uh, one of the things that we'll notice is that Uh, what seems to be the impression of students, no? so if we're thinking about the student perspective, is that when you talk about assessments, naisip agad nila, difficult, difficult, isa sa pinakamalaking lababas, so quiz, test, exam, hard, performance, evaluation, pressure, no? pressure, nervous, okay? study, anxious, fear, hard, Score, grade score. No? Uh, sa chat naman, medyo pareho rin. No? Lumalabas din yung mga salitang words, pressure, test, exam. Um, stress, no? St- uh, stress uh, came out a couple of times. Performance came out a couple of times. Uh, measure, evaluation. Sige. Since may 142 na tayo dito, sige lang, mag-contribute lang kayo. Maybe I'll give you a few more seconds. Let's see if um, there are new ideas that emerge. Study. So study suddenly became bigger. 
uh, studying for an exam, studying for uh, a quiz or, or an assessment. Maybe that's one thing that immediately comes to mind for a student. Cramming, no? So, totoo yan. Naging student din tayong lahat at alam natin ang ibig sabihin niyan. No? So, cramming, no? Tiresome, uh, paper, activity, confusing. Okay? Happy. Uh, it's interesting na medyo lumaki yung word ng happy ng kaunti. Sige. So, if you haven't submitted your words, again, please feel free to contribute and to add it over chat. But I wanted to start this way uh, because I think that we th when we think about assessment, uh, more often than not, the conversation begins with what we plan to do as a teacher, di ba? Parang how we plan to design the assessment. And I think that's important. Uh, after all, if you don't design any assessment, wala namang assessment na mangyayari, no? Uh, but then, I think that hopefully in the next few minutes, I can help you reflect on the student's perspective. Uh, and in online learning, as I will uh, sort of emphasize in the next few minutes, having students on board or changing students' perception of what assessments are is necessary. You know? um, changing what students think of when they think of assessment is, I think, a necessary ingredient if you really want to make online or distance learning work. Sige. So, babalikan natin to mamaya siguro at the end of uh, today's uh, session. Uh, para makita kung nagbago ba yung isip natin, uh, tingin ba natin may mga gusto tayong words na maisip yung students dyan na hindi nila naiisip ngayon based on our impression. No? Um, at maganda pag-isipan yun that in the next few minutes as we talk more about reliable and valid assessments, if you, if you imagine doing this activity with students in the future, you know, parang what, will, what words do you want them to be giving you? Ito ba yung words na gusto natin? Difficult, challenging, hard, anxious, nervous. Or meron kayang ibang words na sana yun yung desirable words natin. Sige. So we'll keep this in the back of our heads uh, as I share some examples and things that hopefully we can reflect on in the next few minutes. So allow me just to set up my screen share. So Sir Franco, uh, I'll set up my screen share now so that we can switch to my slides. Ayan. So salamat sa, ano, salamat sa contribution. Uh, I can see that people are still submitting their words over chat no so ayan pa rin no uh, pressure exercise learning learning no so sana nga lumabas yung word na yon in the future sige so um first of all uh just a caveat um to be honest i really learned a lot again from teacher gem uh and i think that my role in the next few minutes is not necessarily to reiterate some things that she said already uh but inevitably as teacher gem told us in the beginning of her presentation when we think of assessment, sa totoo lang, um, although merong mga nagbago dahil sa distance learning, a lot of the things that we still believe in or hold true uh, in terms of what valid and reliable assessments are uh, still continue to hold true, whether you're talking about face-to-face -face learning, whether you're talking about distance learning. So I'd like to frame uh, my sharing with three questions. So these are the three questions that I hope that I can uh, sort of address and help you think about in the next few minutes. So the first question is, what do we mean by valid and reliable? Okay, so na banggit na ni teacher Jen to extensive Jen extensively to, uh, but what I'd like to do is just to maybe add another layer to that conversation. Uh, and then the second question, and I'll spend a lot in the second question is, in distance learning, what is the role of assessment? And this is very much connected to the word cloud a while ago, no? That if we think that when we ask students about what assessment is to them. Siguro para sa kanila, yun yun, yun yung mga words na lumabas kanina. Exam, difficult, anxious, uh, challenge, di ba? parang pressure, stress. Uh, but yun nga ba talaga yung gusto nating role ng assessment in distance learning? Yun nga ba yung gusto nating impression ng students uh, pagdating sa distance learning? Uh, and finally, we'll talk about the challenges and potential solutions. Uh, I agree with teacher Jen that I don't think any speaker uh, in his right mind will be able to give an absolute solution to everything. No? Parang pag may speaker or may may talk siguro na nagsabi ng gano'n, parang you'll be conspicuous of that. No? Parang meron ba talagang solution yung ibang bagay? Uh, but rather, uh, hopefully, there are some strategies that I can share that might be helpful for some things that you feel might be challenging, might, might be problematic when you actually implement assessments in your uh, distance learning scenario. Sige. So over chat, I can see how active you have been a while ago, and I've been monitoring the chat, and I think that's great. So I think uh, the way I usually like to use the chat portion of a synchronous session like this is if, the, if there's something that strikes you, feel free to share it over chat. No? Kahit na kunyari may isang word kayong naisip, share nyo lang, no? SKL. No? Uh, 
kung meron kayong naisip na thought na biglang pumasok sa isip nyo habang nag-uusap tayo ngayon, feel free to share it over chat so that it can become a more active experience for you as well. No? So I know that this is not ideal. Uh, again, much like Teacher Jem, I'm a classroom teacher primarily, and uh, I do miss that energy that can be exchanged between a teacher and a student in a face-to-face -face classroom. Uh, but just the same, we'll work with what we have. So let's begin. Um, again, this might feel like a summary more than anything, but uh, Jem mentioned a while ago that if we, if we summarize it, uh, Popham in an article in ASCD uh, said that validity is really about accuracy. You know? So how accurate uh, does your assessment uh, assess or evaluate a particular learning outcome, for example? And reliability is really about consistency. That if you think about an assessment and the role of the assessment to be able to say who actually learned something uh, and who did it, uh, or who actually learned more than the other, then that's really what we're talking about in terms of reliability. But in this article by Popham, uh, what I like about it is what he says is that more often than not, when we talk about validity and reliability of assessments, we often situate those conversations in the realm of tests or exams. No? Uh, and it doesn't mean that this is bad or this is wrong. In fact, uh, a lot of the conversations about validity and reliability, most especially if you look into the statistics of it, are really about exams, test items, among other things. But I like how this particular article introduces this layer of inference. No? That According to the article, when we think about validity and reliability, hopefully we don't just think of it as measures of validity and reliability of a particular exam structure, so, so to speak, but the validity and reliability of the inference that you can get from particular exams. No? Uh, ano ibig sabihin yan, no? uh, one way of putting it is this, no, that when we bring in this additional layer to the definition of what we uh, talk about when we talk about valid and reliable assessments, what we're really talking about here is that uh, valid and reliable assessments are assessments that accurately and consistently provide evidences of learning. Uh, and when, when talking about assessments, I, I like this phrase, evidences of learning. Uh, in a course that we recently ran in Ateneo, uh, we presented this metaphor. Uh, it's the metaphor of a, a, uh, a prisoner, or for example, or someone in front of a judge. Uh, what, one thing that we can say is something like this. Learners should be presumed innocent of learning until they are proven guilty beyond reasonable doubt. No? Uh, so if we just contemplate about this particular phrase, I think that this very much talks about what assessment really is or what assessment ought to be. You know? That the role of the big role of assessment is so that we can actually validate if learners are actually learning. Um, and I think it's worth thinking about this because I think this is a necessary shift from an attendance mindset, mindset rather, to an assessment mindset. Ano yun, no? um, usually kasi when we talk about teaching, uh, a lot of us, to be honest, myself included, uh, we really come more often than not from an attendance mindset. No? So my students went into my class, listened to my lecture, so my student learned. Uh, but did the student really learn? Hindi natin sigurado yan, di ba? Ang katotohanan yan, we're not sure. We're never sure if the students learned if we're just basing it on attendance. Uh, but rather, the invitation is to shift from an attendance mindset to an assessment mindset. No? Uh, to, to create and craft and design and facilitate more formal ways of really finding out if students are actually learning. And when we talk about distance learning, I think that I'm preaching to the crowd when I say that this is probably one of the things that we're worried about, diba? that when we don't see our students in the classroom, we do, they don't react to the things that we're saying, uh, just like a face-to-face -face lecture, uh, all of these senses that we usually rely on to check if students are learning, uh, they're now gone, no? uh, or they're now absent, so to speak. Uh, Moore uh, has this theory that is uh, mentioned a lot in a lot of distance learning scenarios. I won't get into the theory too much, but I'd like to use the theory just to explain what's happening and, and what we problematize when we think about distance learning. No? So according to Moore, uh, when we are physically distant from the learner, when the teachers are, uh, is, the teachers are physically distant from their learners or from their students, it doesn't just create an actual physical distance, but it also generates what he calls a psychological distance. No? Uh, and again, without getting into the theory too much, uh, one simple way of explaining it, th this is that transactional distance is really acknowledging that there could be a gap 
between these two things, the teacher's intent, what you intend, intend for students to learn, and the student's actual experience, them actually learning it. Uh, if you think about it, even in a face-to-face -face scenario, there could be this gap, right? Uh, I could be explaining to you something right now, and I might be assuming that you're getting it, that the things are sinking in, that you're able to relate to the things that I'm saying, but I'm not really sure, no? So again, even in a face-to-face -face scenario, uh, this gap is also present. But then in a distance learning scenario, more often than not, uh, this gap is wider, uh, mainly because of the limitations of distance learning. So for example, a while ago over chat, a lot of you were asking about modules. So if your modality in your particular school is a printed module and the student experience is that they're reading through the module and then the teacher is not present at all, present at all uh, then there is really this risk of that gap, you know, that you're assuming that what's written in the module is enough for your students to actually learn from, that what's written in the module, the instructions, the content there is enough so that it will get your students towards the learning outcome that you actually set for them. Another way of putting up, putting this gap uh, or, or phrasing this gap is called the absence of the teacher. And a lot of us talk about this, no, when we shift to online learning. Parang walang teacher, nawawala yung teacher, no? Um, but I think it's worth challenging this, no? Is the teacher really absent? Uh, or are there ways for us to actually insert our teaching presence? Uh, and my pitch this, the next few minutes is maybe we can use assessment to actually insert our teaching presence. No? Uh, maybe we can think about what we do as teachers and then build it into the distance learning scenario through the form of assessments. Of course, assessments are not the only things that you can include uh, to, to make your teacher's presence more felt, uh, but then surely, I think that this is one clear way we can do it. So in the next few minutes, allow me just to share with you an image. Uh, I like uh, when I teach, one of the things that I like as a strategy is uh, I try to think of an image to explain a concept because I feel like if it's an image that is relatable to students, uh, they will be able to hinge on the concept easier. No? Um, so our image for this afternoon is a map that when we ask this question, so what is the role of assessment in a distance learning scenario? Uh, the simplest way that I think I would describe it is that it's like creating a map. And there are three components to this map. We set the destination. So assessments are about setting the destination in this map called learning. Second, assessments are about pinning milestones, no? pinning milestones towards the destination in a learning scenario or in the journey of learning that your students will be going through. And third, assessments allow you to, uh, to navigate, charting the path from the starting point to the destination that you hope your students uh, will get to. So we'll continue to use this analogy as we move forward so that we can have an imagery in mind you know, that imagine that when you're assessing students, it's really like creating a map and we'll try to break it down for you in the next few minutes. So the first is to set the destination. Um, what does it mean to set the destination? If we sort of use this as an analogy, as a metaphor for what assessment is, what do you think it means by setting the destination? Sige. So can you head over chat right now and then just give me your impression. Um, if we try to juxtapose this image of assessment as mapping learning for our students, uh, what do we mean by setting the destination? Sige. Uh, I'll wait for a few seconds. Uh, and, and see if there are some thoughts that come out over chat. What do you think do we mean by setting the destination when we talk about assessments? Okay, hindi ko alam kung hindi pa naglo-load yung sa akin, pero the goal, okay, the goal, objectives, okay, heart, heart, no? So, okay. Sige, so think about it, no? Uh, what does it mean to set the destination? The goal, objectives, knowing the product, okay. Knowing where we're heading, setting the learning goal, objectives of the lesson. Okay. So a lot of you have mentioned things that are actually here on my next slide, no? as if na predict kung iisipin ninyo. But when you think about assessment as a way for setting the destination, it's really about two things. No? It's really about establishing clear learning outcomes. Um, some of us call them goals. Some of us call them learning objectives. Um, some of us call them, um, for example, expected learning outcomes. We all have different names for this, but Whatever name we call them, they're about really the objectives that you hope for your students to learn. Uh, and it's also about aligning evidences of learning. Uh, and I don't think I need to overemphasize this because I think Teacher Jem um, talked about this lengthily a while ago and really emphasized how important it is to start with that. 
So this is rule number one. No? Assessments uh, in distance learning is really about setting the destination. I'll give you some examples of, of how to do this. Uh, according to Fisher and Frey, uh, Fisher and Frey rather, uh, they, they talk about three things that are important in an assessment or feedback system. The first thing is called feed up. Uh, what they say is that in a good feedback system, and I'd like to think that uh, when we think about assessments, we're really designing a feedback system. Uh, one of the first things that teachers need to do is to feed up, uh, meaning to clarify the goal among students. And I think this is what I was saying a while ago. When when we need, uh, when I said that, I think we need to help students shift how they see assessments because more often than not, when students think of assessments, they think of the teacher as the judge. Right? They think of us judging them, but then. If we begin here, if we begin to feed up, if we begin to make our learning objectives more transparent uh, to students, then maybe we can shift the relationship a bit. Um, so one, one very explicit and simple way to do this is to make sure that whenever you start your module, you begin with learning objectives. Uh, but more than just writing your learning objectives, to make sure that your learning objectives are understandable to your students. No? And I think this latter bit is important because of course, tayo mga teachers, uh, we've been educated in the school of bloom. Diba? Alam natin yung mga words from, from remember to evaluate to create. Uh, and, you know, uh, for teachers who have been teacher for, teaching for quite a, a while, this, these vocabulary words are so easy that to, to, to just pull in and, and make part of our learning objectives. But when you read it, I think it's worth asking yourself, if you're a student, do you really understand what this learning objective means? Do you really understand what what the learning objective is actually saying. No? So it's important to think about that. Uh, just to share a little bit about this. Uh, in a school that I observed, an elementary school, there's a very interesting strategy that I saw. One of the first thing that, things that they did in their class was for the teachers to actually present the learning objectives as they would in a lesson plan. And then one of the first activities they ask students to do is to rephrase the learning objective. No? So for example, kunyari ito, construct effective online assessments that provide valid evidence of student progress. Um, of course, grade school yung, yung example ko, no? so hindi talaga to appropriate. But if you, just, just to relate it to that, no? uh, what they would ask students to do is to rewrite the sentence in their own words. No? So that might be an interesting strategy, that in your modules, maybe you can include something like that. No? Um, to to not just force students to read the learning objectives, because to be honest, um, I, 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 uh, most probably a lot of students don't actually read the, the learning objectives part seriously. No? Um, so maybe just to make sure that they actually process the learning objectives, it might be worth maybe asking a question about it, asking students maybe to rephrase it, uh, so that the learning objectives are not just presented, but really processed. No? And again, the goal here in Feed Up is to, is to, is to allow your students to know that this is the goal of this particular module, the right? when they're going through the module, uh, they become conscious that at the end of the module, this is what the module is really all about. These are the skills that I want to learn um, from from this particular module. Another strategy I've seen some in some schools is to rephrase uh, the learning objectives to I can statements. Now, I don't know if you've tried that before. Now, for example, instead of saying plan formative assessments to offer helpful feedback. The way they will present it to students is to say something like, I can construct uh, formative assessments that provide helpful feedback. So even just rephrasing the learning objective can really do wonders because uh, the language will really get in the way sometimes when if, if we really want students to own the learning objectives. Um, a second thing that I'd like to uh, pitch today is not, don't just present your learning objectives in the beginning of your modules, but also present your assessments no? uh, and i guess for for some of us this, this might not be uh, this might not be something that is that we're used to doing because usually when we think of assessments they're usually happening they, they usually happen at the end of a particular semester at the end of a particular quarter uh, but then if we present what we want students to be able to do at the onset then i think the value of this is it frames their module taking so for example uh, if you're teaching an english class and your learning learning objective is for students to be able to uh, let's say let's just do something uh, that's more elementary the, uh, to be able to write uh, a complete sentence uh, uh, with the proper grammatical uh, uh, following the proper rules of grammar let's say that that, that might be your learning objective um, if, if at the end of the module, you actually want them to introduce themselves, for example, in the language, for example, introduce yourself uh, in 10 sentences in English, it might be worth 
including that in the beginning of your module to tell them that at the end of the module ito yung sanang kaya nyong gawin na at the end of the module sana dahil natutunan niyo yung mga bagay na gusto kong matutunan niyo sa loob ng module sana kaya nyong magsulat ng 10 sentence para mapakilala ang sarili niyo in English or in the particular language uh, in your particular subject area so the goal here again is to try to shift the relationship no that that assessment is not just the teacher saying ito yung gusto kong matutunan niyo but rather changing the perspective and saying, ito yung gusto nating mangyari. Uh, so kumbaga, si teacher, when we begin to shift these relationships, becomes someone who is a guide rather than a judge. So, um, of course, when you talk about learning objectives, it's a mix of your knowledge, skills, and attitudes or uh, in the Department of Education, your competencies. No? In Ateneo, we call it the competence. But I guess the counterpart, uh, based on what uh, teacher Jem showed a while ago, is your competency. No? Uh, and the competency is really an application of knowledge, skills, and attitudes. So how does this happen? No? Uh, and how do you actually create this? How do you actually measure? Um, a while ago, there were some questions about, uh, are exams still valid? No? Or should we still give exams in online distance learning or in distance learning? Um, I think there's still a space for, for exams. No? But uh, I know that when you talk about exams, for example, the screenshot that you see here is a quiz in my, in my online course. Um, there are a lot of things that really come to mind. No? So ito yung elephant in the room lagi when we talk about assessments. Uh, we ask the question, is the student really the one taking the exam? So issues of integrity. Uh, are there opportunities for cheating? Diba? Parang kanina napag-usapan natin over chat na paano natin malalaman kung yung students ba talaga yun? No? Paano natin malalaman kung sila ba talaga yung kumukuha ng exam? Kasi syempre, lalo na kung summative assessment to and there is a grade attached to the particular assessment, uh, you want to make sure. No? So, I'd like to pitch two things. So first is, if you really want to give objective exams, here are some exam parameters that might help you. Uh, and again, I guess the caveat here is uh, there is some technology that might be involved that will allow for you to do this. Um, so it might not fit all kinds of modalities. So for example, if you're doing some sort of online learning, even if, let's say, it's just your assessment that is not online, you might want in to look into some of these parameter parameters. So for example, number one, is to schedule your exam. No? Usually scheduling an exam or a quiz, or graded quiz, um, will help avoid cheating scenarios. Uh, a timed exam is also a way of doing so. So for example, uh, the exam will happen from 9 to 11 a.m. Uh, it's a 20-minute exam. So if, if you're using a learning management system, for example, I've seen DepEd post about Moodle uh, or, being, or rolling out a learning management system. Timing exams is uh, one of the features there that you might want to look into. Uh, another feature is randomizing questions. No? So again, uh, if you think about it, this is not new, no? So parang meron tayong mga set A, set B, set C, uh, and randomizing answers as well. So again, uh, these are not surefire ways of uh, preventing cheating, but these are some provisions uh, that might help you address the potential of cheating at least. No? Um, another strategy is to display one question at a time. So for example, if you're familiar with Google Forms and you know that you can create quizzes on Google Forms, uh, one thing that you can do is actually to use sections so that you ask one question at a time rather than putting all of your questions on one page. And the value of that is it's really just a harder, uh, it will just make it harder for students to pass on exam questions from one person to another. But again, all of these are sort of workarounds. No? And I still strongly believe that kung may, may student na gusto talaga mag-cheating, gagawin niya ng paraan niya. No? And uh, I like how teacher Roda mentioned a while ago that at the end of the day, uh, it's really about the relationship that you build with students and the trust. No? Uh, but just the same, if you feel like these parameters are things that you could set up, um, they might help. Uh, another strategy is to vary your question types. No? So for example, there are two question types that I found helpful um, so that the exams are not easily cheatable, so to speak. Uh, the first is, a call, is called multiple right answers. So for example, uh, we're often used to uh, multiple choice question exams, but then there are exam types wherein there is more than one right answer. So in those cases, it's a little harder. It, it gets your students to think a little more, uh, most especially, for example, if you don't say how many are the right answers there. No? So they really need to evaluate all of the choices uh, so that they can choose which one they think is correct. Uh, another strategy I've heard of from some educators is to mix multiple choice questions with open-ended questions. So for example, um, if we're so worried about cheating and integrity, it's really the multiple choice choice questions that is really easier to sort of uh, cheat in. Uh, but then if you have a follow-up question that, that asks you questions about the multiple choice question, uh, that might be a strategy that you can use 
um, to to sort of um, make sure that it's not purely objective. For example, uh, uh, you have a question, uh, for example, in an assessment, uh, what do we mean by reliability? And then you have uh, uh, option A, B, C, and D. And, you're, and then that, that, that's followed by an open-ended question that might sound like, uh, based on your answer, can you give an example of a situation? Now, the situation is not something that, that, that students can easily uh, cheat about because it, it will be pretty obvious if you, if you uh, present the actual situation, if, a student, if student one and student two will actually submit the actual situation. So these are some strategies that you might want to, to include if you feel like uh, in your summative exams, you're worried about integrity, you're worried about cheating. Uh, but another, I think, broader strategy is, I think, just to build on what teacher Jem mentioned a while ago, uh, to ask yourself what you're testing, that are you testing what students know or do you want to test what students can do with what they know? Um, and the latter is really a test of competence or competencies. Uh, so if you're teaching testing competencies, maybe exams like that might not be the best medium for you. That when you're teaching competencies, maybe you might want to look into more authentic forms of assessment. Uh, in, again, in a course that we're teaching right now in Ateneo, uh, this is how we present authentic assessments. That authentic assessments are assessments where uh, students are given an opportunity to apply their knowledge and skills. Um, they're usually a complex performance that requires justified decisions. Uh, and the reason why I'm showing you this, this, this definition is that sometimes when we think about authentic assessments um, and maybe performance tasks are things that immediately comes to mind, Sometimes we think that, for example, in an online learning scenario, dapat ano siya, multimedia, di ba? Magpa-video tayo dahil authentic assessment yan. Or magpagawa tayo ng game dahil authentic assessment yan. But authentic assessments, I think, are not necessarily always authentic, mainly because of the medium of the assessment. Video is a medium. A performance is a medium. But authentic assessments, the authenticity of an assessment is really based on the task that you actually give students. And why is, this, why is it important to, to, to remind ourselves of this? I think it's important to remind ourselves of this because this means that even if you're teaching in what you might say is a low-tech scenario, na paper and pen lang, no? na for example, you're doing printed modules and then your plan is they answer some questions, they submit, so the, modules, the, the worksheets get picked up and then teachers will send the checked worksheets later on. Even if you're in a paper-based scenario, you could still generate authentic assessments for your students, depending on the question that you ask. For example, um, I'll, I'll, I'll give this example at the risk of uh, being mistaken because I know that we, our moderators for today are uh, Araling Panlipunan teachers. No? So for example, if, you're, if your question is, uh, if, you're, if you're doing a unit on the branches of the government uh, and your question is simply, what are the branches of the government? Of course, that's not an authentic assessment, right? Because that just measures knowledge and skills. But if, let's say, you create a scenario and that becomes the question that students write about. For example, um, in the time of COVID right now, if you were to write to someone from one branch of the government um, to send them a letter uh, suggesting ways to improve how we're dealing with the, the, current, uh, the current virus or the current uh, pandemic, uh, who will you write to? Uh, write a letter to, imagine that you're writing a letter and write an actual letter to someone from that branch of the government uh, and give your suggestions. So if you think about it, it's those two are writing exercises. No, uh, You can easily imagine students doing that in pen and paper. Uh, but the latter example, just because of the scenario that you put, just because of the nature of the task that you had students think about, uh, actually made it an authentic assessment. So I think this is something that's, that's interesting to, to think about that authentic assessments are not authentic because of the medium. They're authentic because of the task that you give students. Again, which means that even if you're, if you're just uh, on paper and pen, it could be an authentic assessment. No? So the keywords here are complex performance, and that requires justified decisions, that there may not be one single correct answer. No? So here's an example from my class. Uh, I teach a class called Visual Thinking right now. Sorry, medyo college example, but I'm sure that uh, those of you who might be teaching in secondary education can also relate. No? Uh, I ask them, see, since the, they are business students, I ask them to create a business plan. No? So if you think about this, a business plan is not necessarily something that's so techy, uh, something that will require a lot of multimedia. 
Uh, in fact, a lot of the work here is offline. No? Um, and, I, and I think that even if, let's say, you're working on an online learning model for distance learning, um, remind yourself that projects and assessments need not be online all the time. No? Need not be the students working on the computer uh, all the time. A while ago in the chat, people were asking about things like PE. No? Just, syempre, sa PE, um, kapag nagpasulat ka ng paper, ano yun, di ba? Uh, kung if your learning objective is to be able to, for students to be able to demonstrate a particular skill in physical education, uh, I agree with what Teacher Jen mentioned. Maybe the best medium, best evidence uh, might be a video of them actually doing it. No? So, and the actual doing it, is really not the video making, but the actual doing it is really practicing the demonstration and then just using video as a documentation. So also think of assessments as things that students can do outside the module, outside the printed module, or outside the learning management system uh, if you're an online learning scenario. Um, so I think that's my first point that I'd like to share for today, that one rule for assessments is that assessments uh, really help you set the destination if you're able to clarify what your students, what you want your students to be able to do at the end, um, then hopefully that becomes a clear impetus or the clear catalyst for them to want to learn no? because they know that they need to prepare themselves to be able to get to the destination. So it's really about making your, your uh, end assessment, your summative assessment more transparent. No? Uh, and in a way, we can say that this allows us to quote unquote teach to the test no? because you've already told the students what the test is, so to speak. Uh, such that when they're going through the modules, uh, they will be very cognizant, ideally, of how the modules are preparing them to actually meet the needs of the assessments that you set for them. The second role is to pin the milestones. No? So ngayon, usong-uso yung pag-pin, no? lalo na kung di ba nag-order tayo ng mga bagay sa, ano, um, sa mga online shopping uh, sites. No? And one of the things that we actually learn in general is how to pin our locations. No? So if you imagine, di imagine distance learning, uh, I think this is one of the most important things that we'll need to do as a teacher, to be able to set up milestones, uh, most especially if your, your mode or your mod modality in distance learning is highly asynchronous. For example, um, if you've decided that in your school uh, or if your school decided that it's mostly printed modules. No? So if, if you imagine that for most of the quarter, uh, the experience of the student is that they're going through the modules uh, the absence of the teacher there is to to help them say that I know that okay you're on the right track. How do a, how does a student know uh, that he or she is on the right track? Uh, and I think this is where our formative assessments really come into play. Uh, and I'm I'm glad that in in education parlance, in basic education, and even in higher higher education, uh, we've been talking more about formative assessment over the past few years. And Fisher and Free comes in here again to say that. Uh, feedback is the second element of that feedback system or that sum of that assessment system that uh, ideally uh, in a distance learning scenario or in any, in any teaching scenario, there are opportunities for students to actually test their knowledge and for, for teachers to actually respond to student work. Uh, and I think the latter part is very important uh, that responding to student work or student submissions uh, is really actually one of the main things that is that makes formative assessment important. It's not just the giving of the formative assessment. It's what they get in return. No? Uh, because formative assessment in, in terms of uh, the nature of it or the intention of it uh, is really to help clarify where students are. Diba? Parang yun nga, that's why I like the analogy of, of pins in a map. No? But imagine that the imagery here is that formative assessments are really pins, are really milestones that you set so that you can be you can tell students i think you're on the right track uh, i'm not so sure if you're getting it right and things like that so how can technology help uh, if you're doing quizzes in a platform one of the things that is usually uh, readily available is preset feedback so if you haven't done this yet uh, it might be worth looking into it for example the screenshot that you see here is using google forms so if you use google forms as uh, as an assessment tool uh, then for for the correct answers and for the incorrect answer, answers, you can actually write feedback. And for me, the feedback is one of the most important things that you will put in your in your uh, automated quiz because it's in the feedback that you actually insert your teaching presence, diba? It's in the feedback that the teacher can actually be present to say, yes, you got the answer right, or no, you might have misconstrued the answer to be this, but the actual answer is this because blah, 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 okay? Uh, again, because the goal here is to 
help students learn a little more and to confirm their learning and to confirm misconceptions. Uh, another assessment strategy, so, uh, sorry. So when you talk about quizzes, uh, if you're not online, uh, maybe an alternative here is an answer key. And uh, I think I feel a little funny being able to say this because I think it's pretty obvious. But then if you're not doing things online, uh, making sure that you have an answer key and your answer key ideally is not just the right answer. Um, I think that's a good strategy to think about that if uh, you have an answer key, hopefully the answer key is more than just saying this is right or wrong. Hopefully the answer key also tells the students or informs the students uh, why this is right and why this is wrong. Uh, another strategy is to use portfolios. Again, if you're in an online learning scenario, this example for, is from my class. I use Google Slides uh, and I use uh, I ask students to maintain a Google Slide deck throughout the semester so that I can ask them questions throughout the semester and then they can continue to build on this portfolio. No? Um, I know that portfolio assessment is something that is also common in modular teaching. For example, in ALS, I know that uh, in, in the ALS scenario, the ba, meron tayong mga uh, compilation of the output uh, of all of the modules. And so I think this might not be new to you, uh, but I think a portfolio assessment is something that is really worth looking into uh, as a formative assessment. Uh, but again, as a formative assessment, the important uh, thing to design and facilitate and to plan out for is uh, when are the points wherein you will actually check the portfolio and provide feedback? Because that's important. No? Uh, and I know that to be honest, this is one of the more challenging things, most especially if there is zero online as part of your distance learning. Uh, because if you can, if you can imagine that, um, how, what is the scenario wherein your students will be submitting their, let's say, their their portfolio? Um, the portfolios will be shipped to the school, for example. The teachers will pick up the portfolio from the school. The teachers will check it, and then the teachers will return it to the student. Diba? So, bago mangyari lahat ng yon nasa module 5 na yung student, kaka-check mo lang ng module 3. No? So, um, I know that this is one of the challenging things. Uh, but if you are to think about something and to plan something out, I think this is worth thinking about. No? How, can you, how can you make that loop smaller? No? Uh, what I've seen is, is the insertion of some online learning as part of distance learning that is not online. For example, uh, I know of a center that what they do is they have a, a messenger chat, no? Uh, and what happens is even if the modules are offline, what they do is that in the messenger chat, they do check-ins with students. Uh, and this is where they can actually exchange ideas, and this is where teachers can actually provide feedback. No? So if you were to invest in something, I'd say invest in that. No? Uh, invest in a modality, a way, uh, so that you can actually reach your students and provide some more timely feedback. So feedback is important to, uh, to validate the quality of answers. And uh, one of the ways by which you can do it is uh, through uh, adding rubrics. No? So if you're in any learning management uh, system, uh, one of the generic tools that you have there is an online discussion, just like the screenshot that you're, you're seeing here. Uh, and I like online discussions because it mimics uh, physical discussions no? because students can actually contribute to questions uh, and you can actually see their answers. Uh, but the challenge with online discussions, I think, is that if you have a large number of students, you will also have a large number of things to read. No? So imagine that if you have 10 online discussion forums and you have 30 students, Imagine the amount of time that you will spend just reading uh, all of their entries. No? So again, it's important to be able to read all of your entries, but imagine the, the latter scenario wherein you want to give feedback to them. And I think this is where rubrics actually help a lot. Uh, the rubric that I'm showing you right now is my actual rubric in a course I'm running at the moment. Uh, sorry about that, uh, working from home. Uh, and it's a single point rubric. And this is what I, uh, why I want to show you this because uh, lately, I've been a fan of single point rubrics. Now, single point rubrics uh, are rubrics that look like this. You spend more time breaking down all of the criteria. Uh, and then more often than not, the points are binary. No? So um, did the student submit it on time? Yes or no. Was it complete? Yes or no. Uh, the quality of contribution uh, from zero to two, uh, what does it, um, how do you rate the quality? So having single point rubrics or a couple of these things um, are really valuable because of two things. First of all, when we train students to use rubrics when they're working on their assignments, uh, it actually promotes self-evaluation. That, For example, if this is a rubric that I'm looking at as a student and I'm contributing to an online discussion forum, then I'm actually already self-evaluating myself. Uh, that when I'm answering the online discussion forum, 
I'm making sure that my answer abides by the criteria that is set by the rubric. Uh, at the same time, it also allows teachers to provide uh, more timely feedback and quicker because all you need to do here is to score the rubric. Um, so that might be something that will help. Uh, again, uh, rubrics are not necessarily online exclusive tools. Uh, it could be an offline rubric, but to make a rubric available and to invest time in creating a rubric, I think will go a long way in terms of feedback. Uh, if you're using a learning management system, uh, I just want to show this just to, to push the envelope no, and just for you to explore what you can do with it. You know, that uh, in most learning management systems, for example, you are allowed for students to actually respond in different ways, such as posting images, uh, among other things. So uh, that's really about uh, pinning milestones, that when we talk about formative assessments, the one role is for these assessments to to allow students to confirm, and uh, students and teachers, to confirm or uh, to clarify misconceptions along the way. Um, and again, I guess one major challenge here is really the loop. No? How fast can you get that loop uh, to be? Uh, and again, that, that might depend on our context, but it's good to think about how you can close the loop faster as much as you can. So the last thing I'd like to share with you is that uh, assessments third. Uh, it's really also about charting the path. And maybe this latter part is not about assessments per se, but it's about what you do about assessments or what you do with what happens in the assessment. And I think teacher Jem touched on this a while ago. Uh, in my classes, one of the things that I like doing as a strategy is at the end of my module, I always have what I call an exit ticket. So an exit ticket is simply a question that you ask students. No? So for example, uh, this is an example exit ticket from uh, from from one of the modules that I'm teaching right now. Uh, so for example, based on module one, how has your thinking or opinion changed or has, has been influenced? Uh, so usually I just have one or two questions uh, and students will answer in two or three sentences, but usually exit tickets are good ways for me to, to gauge where they are, uh, what they're actually getting so far. Uh, but I think assessments in this third role uh, it's really an invitation for us to do what Fisher and Frey talks about when they say uh, feed forward. No? Uh, and this is what teacher Jem mentioned a while ago when she said in the latter part of her presentation that when we talk about assessments, one of the important things to think about is how you will use the data. And ideally, assess assessment data is used to modify instruction. No? Um, in a face-to-face -face scenario, uh, this is easy to imagine. Right? Now, for example, if you give a quiz and then they, do, they don't seem like they're getting some parts of the items, uh, then you'll probably reteach. No? Uh, in an online learning scenario, maybe it's something similar. No? So for example, in the, in the example here, uh, this is from an actual class that I, I just recently taught. I had to adjust the course content uh, because I noticed that in the, in the online learning management system, uh, when I read through the interactions of my students, uh, I was giving them too much work. No? So I had to adjust a little bit. Uh, of course, if you're not in an online learning modality, adjustments might be harder to make. So maybe the way to feed forward is um, to do interventions. Uh, but again, uh, the concept here is to think about what the data means to modify your instruction or to mod modify the learning experience of students moving forward. No? So here's another example. Um, in, in our class in Ateneo, uh, we don't really endorse a lot of synchronous sessions. Uh, again, mainly because we know that not all students can connect to the internet. So we want to minimize synchronous sessions. So most of our courses are actually asynchronous. Um, and what I try to do is before the synchronous session, I ask them to give me some questions that they want me to, to answer, um, presupposing that they've been doing the asynchronous sessions beforehand. So this might be something that you might want to think about also, that um, when you actually so right now, I know that a lot of us are designing the modules, but as we approach the school year, when the school year begins, uh, the students will now shift to actually working on the modules. So your role as a teacher will now change. No? Uh, so what will be your role? And I think one important role is to be able to get some feedback so that you can feed forward. No? Um, that maybe every week, I don't know, if there's some way to communicate to students, to check on what they've gotten in the module so far, what is not clear, um, that might be a good thing to invest in so that you can actually feed forward and do something that will help them moving forward. Uh, because again, when we think about assessments in distance learning, hopefully it's not just something that happens at the end. No? That assessment uh, for me, or assessments rather, 
uh, actually helps you map the learning experience. No? By inserting these things, I think the intention is to really make the teacher more present. No? Uh, that in the absence of the teacher in most online learning scenarios or, or distance learning scenarios, uh, most especially because most of it is asynchronous, assessments actually serve an important purpose no? uh, because it allows you to help minimize, if not eliminate, the transactional distance, you know, the misconceptions that might happen along the way, the gaps between the teacher's instructional intention and the student's actual experience or what the students are actually learning or not learning. So I'd like to end with just some key ideas. Uh, I think the big idea I'd like to share this afternoon is that um, to reframe how we see assessment, you know, that assessment, most especially in distance learning, is really about making transparency and communication happen between the teacher and the student. Um, it's not just about asking students to do things, uh, but it's really about using assessments to guide them in their journey in online learning. Um, and I'd like to end with this quote from William uh, in Top Ham. Uh, what, he, what William said is, assessment is the key process in instruction. It is only through assessment that we can find out whether what has been taught has been learned. So again, the first part of this uh, this quote uh, talks about the shift I mentioned earlier. No, uh, the shift from an attendance mindset to an assessment mindset. No? So not just be to not just to think about attendance. Are they viewing my module or not? Not just to think about that question, but to think about are they learning or not? Because the learning or not is a more important question than are they viewing the module or not. Assessment is therefore the bridge between teaching and learning. Um, that in as much as we spend a lot of time designing for teaching, most especially in a distance learning scenario, uh, it's still the learning that's important. Uh, and as we know, uh, good teaching is not just giving students content and leaving them to their own means. No? Uh, good teaching uh, is making sure that learning actually happens. No? Uh, and so I think that when you think about validity and reliability, uh, broadly speaking, it's really about how assessment continues or will continue to support learning. Uh, and most especially in distance learning, I think that's important to think about. So thank you. Thank you very much for the invitation to share with you this afternoon. And I hope that uh, there are some tips that has been helpful. Yeah, marami salamat, Sir Gavin. Salamat, salamat din. Uh, Sir Franco, parang di ka yata namin naririnig. <laughs> oh, yun. Yun. Ay, yun. <laughs> so, Sir Galvin, habang nakikinig ako sa inyo, nagbabasa din ako na nakipag-interact ako sa ating mga audience. At, oh, uh, uh, yun. Yes, <laughs> yan, oh, kasi napakasarap kausap ng mga teachers natin. At saka, uh, Miss Roda, ito yung lagi nating uh, pangako sa mga ano natin, no, sa ating mga uh, viewers, sa uh, mga teachers natin na pag nagdi-design po talaga tayo ng mga webinars na ganito, mga trainings, lagi po talaga natin silang iniisip. So, yun, katulad sinabi ni Sir Galvin at Miss Jem kanina, na pag nag, uh, nag-design din tayo ng mga assessments, iniisip natin yung mga estudyante natin. So, um, in a similar manner, kami pag nag-design din po kami ng uh, mga webinars, nag-iisip kami, nag-conceptualize kami. Usually, mga 2 a.m. ng madaling araw yan. Alam po ni Miss Roda yan na doon lumalabas <laughs> sa mga, mga ideas namin. Uh, Lagi pong teachers ang iniisip namin. So, oh, yun, Sir, uh, Sir Galvin, maraming maraming salamat. Uh, sana po nakikita salamat, yung mga chat, mga live chat ng mga audience natin. Sobrang um, uh, heartfelt at uh, tuwang-tuwa ang ating mga uh, audience. Uh, and also to Miss Jem, no, kanina, um, sobrang dami rin mga, mga comments na nalumabas uh, during the, the talk. So, um, 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 siguro for now, um, i-open natin ngayon yung floor for some questions. Okay? Hindi na po tayo makapag-entertain siguro ng... Uh, Nung madami kasi it's already 2.27 and kailangan na po natin yung weekend natin para makapagpahinga rin tayo kahit pa paano. <laughs> so, uh, sa teachers, uh, if you have questions or um, things that you'd like to ask uh, to our uh, to our speakers, uh, Sir Galvin and Miss Jen, uh, please uh, feel free no, to uh, to ask them. Um. Okay, uh, siguro ito medyo general, no? pero baka pwede lang nating balikan. Yan. So, valid or reliable po ba ang online assessments? So, kanina na doon na-discuss na to pero um, in a very brief, siguro, uh, recall, Sir, um, Sir Galvin, tsaka Miss Jem, no? um, how do you see this? Kasi, yun nga, yung question of, um, 
of um, someone doing it or a question of um, of um, yung integrity ng test natin or assessments natin. Siguro, I can start and then si Teacher Jem. Go, go, uh, ahead, uh, go ahead, sir, uh, Galvin. So, hindi ko sinasadyang maging philosopher yung sagot. Pero, um, I think that uh, one of the things that I also learned today from Teacher Jem is ang sagot talaga dito is, ano, it depends, di ba? Uh, it depends. And sa totoo lang, uh, ang sagot dun sa it depends ay hindi naman yung pagka-online or offline niya yung reason but siya reliable or valid, no? Uh, and I think uh, a lot of us discussed this, uh, both Jem and I discussed this lengthily today, no? that it's really in the design of your assessment uh, that actually makes it valid or reliable, um, not necessarily the form of the assessment. No? Um, so siguro yun lang yung take ko dyan, no? Whether you're thinking about assessments online or offline, it's really how you design the assessment that will lead to validity and reliability, um, not necessarily the medium of the assessment. And thank you. Thank you, Sir Galvin. Miss Jen, any, any, any thoughts on that po? Narinig pa ba ako, sir? Ayan, for uh, me na po. Yes, ma'am. Ayan, hello po. Ayan. Um, para po kasi sa mga, lalo na siguro sa mga hindi season teachers natin, ano, we usually think of assessment as very similar to the paper and pen, yung magic test, yung quizzes, no? So, um, yung base sa discussion namin ni sir na um, yung assessment ba yan actually isa sa libo-libong paraan kung paano tayo makapag so, whether it's online, whether it's face-to-face, -face, assessments are the same. Whether it's authentic or online. No? So, kung paano mo siya ginawa, doon nagre-reflect actually yung assessment kung valid or reliable. Babalik lagi yan sa teacher. Hindi pwedeng, um, parang ganito, mababalahat ng scores ng bata. No? So, actually, magagalit yung test natin pag nagalit, mababalahat yung score kasi it's reflective not of the students but to the teacher, no? Kahit na, kahit na, alam ko, hindi laging reliable yung conclusion ng mga boss natin or admin natin na basta mababa lahat ng score, um, teacher factor yan, ano? But we also have to be open, I guess, as teachers na pwedeng teacher factor, most especially ngayon sa distance learning, no? Lahat tayo nagpa-practice. Parang nagpa-practice na walang practice kasi totoo na ginagawa natin agad. So, Ayun, so maraming salamat. Ako kaya agree din talaga doon no? sa idea na uh, babalik ka ulit doon sa structure ng assessment mo. Eh, no? yung, hindi yung uh, medium you, that you will deliver the assessment. So, so teachers, no? uh, wag natin sigurong uh, uh, yung, yung differences ng modalities natin. Uh, may, yes, maybe siguro may konting ano yan, may konting effect of course. May, syempre yung uh, delivery online, delivery in a modular format, or delivery in a, a remote learning setup or blended learning, may konting differences. So siguro yun lang yung kailangan natin siguro bantayan. Uh, mas maging aware tayo on the limitations of our modality. No? Uh, Ms. Ms. Rod, baka may ano po tayo, may uh, extra siguro, thoughts? Siguro ano? Uh, gusto ko lang i-renate yung sagot ko sa senior ni Sir Galvin kanina na we as teachers, we should act not as their judge but the, as their guide. So, siguro para matest natin kung ang ating bang gagawin, whether assessment or other activities is valid or, or not, uh, first, we have to make sure first that we guide our students para din tayo mismo matetest natin na kung maganda yung resulta, magiging proud din tayo na that our pupils were properly guided by us. And then, siguro we can also get the feedback from our pupils na kung okay sila, masaya sila sa klase natin, uh, magaganda yung resulta ng ginagawa nila. Well, I think for me, that can be also, we can also consider that that's one way to know if uh, what we're doing is valid or not. Or Thank reliable. Correct. Tama, no? maraming salamat po. No? Um, yun, so, uh, Sir Galvin, meron isang specific question. I think this is from your presentation. Kasi kanina na, na interest sila, at so medyo madami nag-comment ito kanina. Uh, yung paglalagay ng answer key, lalo na sa mga mag-print okay. ng mga modules natin. So, um, anong abo po ba ito mag-work talaga, sir? Kasi, syempre, pag nilagay natin, hindi po ba siya pala like, ma-ano ma yung integrity ng test natin? Sige. So, siguro yung pinakasimpleng sagot dito is, uh, I guess, ob the obvious answer here is, uh, the assessments wherein you have answer keys in should not be your summative assessments, di ba? Or should not be your graded assessments. Um, I think, uh, maybe just to clarify, uh, these will probably be your 
formative assessments. Kasi uh, tulad ng nabanggit ko kanina, I think the value of the answer key in a formative assessment is the feedback. No? Um, again, if we're working in, uh, with a model wherein, uh, let's say, it's purely printed lahat, no? walang actual feature, very limited communication, uh, that's really, to a certain extent, no? uh, while the students are going through the modules, that's really one of the only ways by which you can clarify their understanding. No? So um, maybe just to clarify it, uh, I was really talking about uh, uh, more formative assessments. No? So, kung ungraded assessments. Yes. So, definitely, kung may answer key doon, syempre, hindi natin i-grade yan. Dahil, andun naman sa answer key. <laughs> uh, and the tendency is, syempre, kung alam ng students na graded, baka, hindi na lang nila yung answer key, di ba? Tapos, yes, kung hindi na lang nila. So, may, may so, I guess, it's more for, for, for formative assessment. Uh, uh, but I think it's also a paradigm, di ba? Na parang, minsan takot tayo na, parang gusto natin itago yung sagot. May ganun kasing perspective minsan, di ba? Na parang, yes. Ayo ko makita niyo yung sagot. Pero in in distance learning kasi, may value yung sagot eh. May value yung immediacy na malaman nila yung sagot. Um, kasi nga wala tayo doon, no? So siguro yung mas yes. yun yung pinagtuunan ko ng ano, ng pansin. Correct sir. Saka sir dito na siguro no, uh, viewers ang um, um, and Sir Galvin correct me if I'm wrong no. Ang 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 babalikan ulit natin dito is that yung paggamit ng assessment as a form of uh, data collection. So ginagamit natin siya to collect data about our students. Uh, so kung example kung maglalagay ka ng answer key, so matutulungan natin siyang uh, makakolekt tayo ng uh, yung mga bata in a self-learning or independent learning um, um, setup na ma- makapag-collect tayo ng data about their learning uh, process ko ni mga tutunan nila. So again, yung paggamit ng assessment as a way to improve instruction, to improve other activities, etc. So again, formative talaga yung yung perspective ng uh, answer key kung maglalagay. Pero syempre, of course po, na pag-graded nga, tama si Galvin, huwag po natin ilagay ang ating mga answer key. No? At makakompromise po ang ating um, ating uh, ating uh, assessment. Ito po very specific, no? Um, from, yes, go ahead po. Go ahead po. Go ahead, Miss Jam. I-add ko lang, sorry, yung kay Sir Galvin kanina, yung sa formative assessment. No? So, um, pag nagtitrain kami before, no, sa old school kasi kami na module writers, mga 2003, 2004 pa, no, na, nung nag-masters ako before. Kaya ang tawag namin sa module, self-learning kit, no? So, yung sinabi ni Sir Galvin, tama yon na yung answers talaga, they need immediate feedback, no? So, yes. kaya po na, Ang ginagawa namin talaga as module writers before, sinasabi na namin doon sa module na nandyan yung sagot para alam ng bata na nandun talaga yung sagot. And may ginagawa kami ganitong strategy. Um, for example, exercise 1, 1 to 5, no? When we write instructions there, um, so alam ng bata na nandoon yung sagot sa likod, no? For example, it's like we are the ones talking to them. No? Ang, ang first phone na ginagamit natin kapag module writers, kapag individualized, parang sa, sa PLD, Personalized Learning Design, no? um, kausap mo sila, hindi sa parang generic test na when you give direction uh, and circle. No, hindi, uh, sorry, sorry for the saying. No, no. Uh, mas ano ka, mas parang, paano ka ba siya Parang kausap ka because you have to make the reader feel or the student feel that you are with them even if they are just merely reading. Parang pang nagpapag tayo yung paper back, ano? Tapos, mm-hmm. ang nilalagay namin sa dulo, towards, ano, kumari, ipunin mo lahat ng scores mo doon sa formative assessment kasi na-check mo naman sa kapag na-achieve mo yung 30 out of 35, pwede ka nang mag-move sa next module mo. Pero kung mm-hmm. hindi, palitan mo tong module na to kasi pwede niya pa rin naman gawin. Even if they have answers already, they don't even have to answer again. Kaila, tama yung sinabi ni Sir Alvin. They have to give, uh, we have to give them yung proper feedback. Bakit sila nagkamali? Bakit wala? And there's no other way. If it's a printed material, no? It, it's there. Yes. Yeah. So Correct. that's what yeah. yeah. yun yung ma- isashare ko sa mga Agreed. boys. Tama, ang ganda nun, Miss Jem. Ang ganda nun, yes, <laughs> oo. Uh, tsaka, yun nga yung nabanggit din Sir Galvin kanina, no? Na yung pag nabigay tayo ng feedback, sana hindi lang quantified feedback like uh, you're wrong, you're you're correct, parang gano'n. So, parang mag, as much as possible, kung kaya natin, maglagay din tayo ng mga uh, mga qualitative feedback para talagang makuha ng estudyante natin. Ano exactly, bakit ako magkamali, ano yung kailangan ko pang gawin or improve natin. So, ang ganda nung uh, strategy ni Miss 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 Jem na binigay, no, yung, um, yung 
pwede ka mag, mag-set ng limit na pag ito, pwede ka na mag-boom sa next module, so promoted ka na sa the next module, no? Uh, or kailangan mo bumalik sa next module. Bumalik siya, parang ganda, diba? Yes, yeah, so ang ganda niya, sir. Parang, sir, gan- um, gagamitin ko yun sa module ko sa atin, eh, habang uh, hindi pa naman, <laughs> nagko-construct pa lang ako ngayon. Eh. May assignment pa pala ako kay Sir Galvin. Ako, lagot. Baka ma-remind ako. <laughs> so, it's, ito po, um, um, may isang tanong from, is it all right to give points for formative uh, assessments? Um, Ano man po from from the panel? Uh, recorded? You mean, may I just clarify, you mean you want to record the formative assessment? Or, I mean, record included in the grading system? Or, kasi you can always give points naman to your assessment. But may I just clarify if this is um, like including this as part of the grading system component? Hmm. So, baka dito, Miss, ang gusto niyang tanong ay kung pwede nga ba siyang isama sa ating uh, graded components. Actually, sa amin, sa school naman namin, sinasama naman namin siya with the this percentage. Kunwari, isasama namin siya sa recitation. Yes. No? Sa recitation yes. component. Kasi ang recitation namin is just 10% of the 100%. Sa dami ng formative assessment, hmm. nakakalunayang din kasi if the, we don't give value dun sa mga nakukuha ng mga bata. No? So, we also want to give them yung proper due, yung, yung mga gumagawa ng formative assessment. ba? So, uh, parang in return, ito naman yung naibibigay natin sa kanila. So, I guess there's no... Wala naman talagang rule na hindi mo dapat isama yung formative assessment. It's just that it's not it should not have a big percentage also or chunk in the grading kasi nga the primary objective objective why you have used formative assessment is for you to have a check. Hindi naman necessary for them to to, to um, gather yung grade no para yeah. madagdagan yung grade nila. So more on more on sa personal ano ng students. Yun. So wala namang general rule about it. Yes. Okay. Um, any other points, Mr. Adam? Yeah, go ahead, Sir. Ako din magdadagdag. I'll finish with Yes. Ako, ano lang, parang naisip ko lang doon sa tanong kasi is ano, ang mahalagang pag-isipan doon is what do the points mean, no? Uh, Kung baga, pag nilagay ka ng points doon, ano yung ibig sabihin ng mga points na yun? Kasi posibleng sa isang formative assessment, iba yung ibig sabihin ng points as opposed to a summative assessment. So for example, uh, ako, sa totoo lang, yung mga participation sa online discussion sa aking online class, uh, kahit formative siya, uh, ginagawa ko siyang graded. No? Pero yung rubric ko, hindi ko in-evaluate yung content. Kasi alam ko, at that point, they're still digesting the content. Di ba? Parang pinag-iisip pa na, pinag-reflectan pa nila yung content. So, hindi pa siya for the purpose of evaluation. So, yung rubric ko dun uh, is really more, for example, the timeliness because I want them to be able to submit on time. Uh, ang rubric ko dun is complete pa sigurado kung sinasagot nila yung yung uh, assessment. Uh, and yung quality of the contribution. No? So, if you remember that rub, um, walang, walang, walang criteria dun tungkol dun sa actual content uh, dun sa nasagot dun sa tanong na yun. No? So, siguro maganda pag-isipan din na yun. No? Na parang, if you, if you decide to grade formative assessments, um, you just have to be careful that you're not gr- grading right away their their understanding of the all the time, of the content all the time. No? Kasi nga, yung purpose ng formative assessment uh, is, ano muna, okay lang magkamali, di ba? Tapos subukan nyo. Yes. Parang yun yung mas purpose ng formative mm-hmm. assessment. So, siguro, yun lang na alam ko yung pinagagaling Kasi baka pag-graded, parang hindi na nila itatry, di ba? Hindi mo na makikita yung mali. At pag hindi mo nakita yung mali, hindi mo alam kung ano yung misconception, di ba? Tama, correct. Thank you, Sir Tama, Galvin. Miss Roda, go ahead. Yes, sir. Um, like, kasi sa amin ni Miss Jem, uh, so we're coming from grade school. Ang mga bata, pag kami pinapagawa ka, they always ask us, is this graded? So, pag hindi test, lagi na tanong, is this graded? So, syempre, mahalaga sa mga bata, lalo pag maliliit, yung ma-recognize yung effort nila. So, madalas, Siyempre, dahil gusto namin i-recognize yun, yung, yung effort na mismo nila, uh, kahit na formative yun, kung basta ako, basta positive, basta para sa mga bata, why not give it to them? Kung, kung makakatulong sa bata na, mag, na mas ma-motivate siya dahil bibigyan mo siya ng parang additional point or hindi man yung one point sa grade, pero additional point, uh, dip, depende nga kung sa parang recitation, why not? Kasi kung para naman sa bata yun, then... 
I think it's okay. Yun nga lang, yeah, okay. Sabi na Sir Galvin, just make it clear to, of course, number one to yourself, bakit mo siya bibigyan ng additional point or grade for formative. At sa mga bata, para hindi rin sila yung laging umaasa na kasi nagkaroon ng, ng misunderstanding tungkol na. Correct. Yeah. Um, yeah, nalinaw na ni Miss Miss Victoria no yung nag uh, yung pong participant na nag-question na ginagamit niya daw po ito para makabawi ang mga bata sa summative Ay. assessment. So para siyang uh, mm-hmm. parang additional component ng summative assessment nila para pambawi ng mga students. Okay, so maganda intention ni ni Miss ni Ma'am Victoria on and then so but again, let's just remember yung yung idea nga na uh, balikan po ulit natin yung yung concept ng formative assessment para saan po siya. Ah uh, siguro last question na po tayo no um Ito, ito medyo general ulit, no? <laughs> so, what is the best way to give summative tests to our learners? So, kanina, formative assessment. So, pagdaan naman natin, sir, siguro, or Miss Jem and Miss Rada, paano naman kapag ito na yung what uh, yung magbe-bear sa grades nila ng mga bata? So, ano yung um, uh, tips, uh, suggestions natin on how to construct, design uh, summative assessments? Uh, for, for me, um, Authentic work should be number one. No? Yung summative na mag-toriadic also na will have uh, yung mga table specifications yan on. Uh, especially for first quarter or second quarter para hindi siya ganun ka effective. No? Sa, ano, that's why we have been encouraging our educators to bank on um, authentic assessment for performance and all. But Kagaya nga nang na-discuss pa din kanina, it also depends on the grading system of the school that you are, yes. you are into. No? Kasi kahit, kahit anong sabihin namin that it should be authentic assessment, if your grading system would always require to have a periodical type of assessment, then this really nothing you can do. But of course, there are other ways like um, rewriting the test questions no? in in a way kagaya nung sinabi ni sir kanina, there are multiple choice items, but if that's the same, you can have another stem um, again no? just to support the idea in parang maging 50-50 merong part na pwedeng ganito pero meron pa rin part na talagang masusupport na naintindihan pa or na, na may evidence that the students have really understood what they're supposed to understand so other than authentic siguro yung strategy ni sir yun sinagot ko pala yun yes <laughs> kailangan po isight yan just kidding <laughs> Marami, <laughs> makamakapiright po tayo ni Sir Galvin. <laughs> any, other, ano po, any other thoughts po on, on summative assessments naman po? Then, Ako, Sir uh, Franco, uh, it really depends, like what Miss Jem uh, oh. mentioned a while ago, it really depends on 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 your school kasi we have different uh, setup. So kung ano yung magiging applicable sa school ninyo, then you just have to try it. Try what is doable. Kasi like like sabi rin ni Ms. Jem kaya lahat tayo nagulat sa sitwasyon. So hindi natin malalaman kung hindi muna natin ita try. Pwede mag-fail tayo sa first try but at least we can do better next time. So we just have to always try and try until siguro we can get what is best for our students. Yeah, nice one. Thank you so much for that, Ms. Rada. Sir Galvin? Uh, ako isa lang. Uh, siguro, uh, ano, balik lang dun sa ano, uh, Uh, for me, kung pipili ka ng i-measure dahil, kunyari, hindi naman pwedeng sobrang daming assessments dahil sa modality natin, uh, I agree with uh, what Jem mentioned a while ago that uh, measure competencies rather than knowledge, skills, and attitudes lang, di ba? Kung baga, yung competency kasi yung reason kung ba't ka ba nagtuturo nitong class na to in the first place, di ba? So kung, uh, kung anumang klase yung modality na babagay para makita mo yung competency na yun, I think yun yung radar mo, kung baga, um, to help you decide on what the most appropriate assessment is or summative assessment is. Okay, thank you. Maraming salamat po. Ako naman personally, ang, ang take ko naman dyan sa summative assessment, sa lalo na sa given our situation, uh, yung mga performance-based saka mga authentic uh, assessments nga. Kaya lang nga, sabi nga ni Sir Galvin kanina, maging worry lang tayo dahil hindi ibig sabihin, for example, nagpa-video ka or kung ano man yung mga online tools na gagamitin mo, um, 
authentic na kagad yun. So, kailangan lagi when we say authentic, nakara-base yan sa real-life settings. So, for example, pwede mong gamitin, for example, ang context natin yun, pandemic. So, kung mm-hmm. as much possible, kung kaya natin gamitin yung context ng mga estudyante natin, uh, ipasok natin sa mga lessons natin, sa mga activities natin, sa mga assessments natin, that would help them, one, to process the pandemic, the, the situation, two, uh, anlapit ng materials. So, hindi sila, like, in terms of, like, the zone of optimal development, hindi sila magpapanik dahil yung materials readily available to them. So, yun lagi yung inisip ko pag nagdi-design din ako ng mga assessments. Ano yung uh, meron na yung mga bata and how else can I expand or deepen their learnings in relation to uh, to the competencies and skills I'd like to develop uh, with them. So, yun. So, maraming salamat po ulit, uh, Sir Galvin and Miss Jem. We know you're so busy. Yes. Yes, yes. Go ahead po. Go ahead. Sorry, i-add ko lang pala. Eh, siguro when um sorry ah, nakalimutan ko rin sabihin kanina when when you are um developing or crafting your assessment you have to make sure that you know how to do it no ah uh, marami kasing teachers na pang project electronic portfolio e portfolio pero sila mismo hindi makagawa pag ginagawa ng admin yun um it's something i have learned when we were designing our capacity building assessment ano na yung teachers namin mahilig magpa-assignment ng video no sa bata. Pero pag sila yung tamagagawa natin, um, hindi nila mailagay yung, you know, putting yourself into the shoes of the students. And so, it's very important that when you ask them to do something, you, you can give an example, you can even demonstrate how to do it, most especially for the online learning modality. Yun. Thank you. Maraming salamat po. So, Sir Galvin and Miss Jem, again, maraming maraming salamat po sa inyo. At alam po namin, sobrang busy nyo. Miss, alam namin ni Miss Rode yan na uh, sobrang si Miss Jem ngayon taking care of uh, the entire Lasal Green Hills uh, um, um, yes, a movement to distance learning. Si Sir Galvin naman, entire Ateneo. So, it, sobrang uh, we're thankful for you uh, for yeah. spending time with us. So, maraming salamat po, Sir Galvin and uh, Miss Jem. Um, Thank you. Um, Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy your weekend. You. Yeah. So, maraming salamat po ulit. So, yun. So, uh, Ms. Roda, so ano, um, uh, any other thoughts or um, parting words? Bago, so, bago tayo pala mag, ano, mag, mag uh, paalam sa ating mga audience. Number one, Um, teachers, viewers, participants, huwag mong kalimutan na ang ating uh, evaluation links. Uh, alam ko po, sanay na kayo na makikita yan sa aming FP, um, sa Facebook page namin, sa Kaagapay Teacher Support. Pero ngayon po kasi, meron na tayong official website. So, ang Kaagapay Teacher Support website is up and running. So, mamaya pong 5.30pm, um, visit the website. Um, you can find it here sa baba ng video natin. Um, sa comment section, nakapin po yan. And sa ating description, nakalink din po yan. Or, punta lang po kayo ng Facebook page namin, nandun din po yan. So, wala na po kayong link task. Uh, hindi na po kayo maliligaw kung saan po ang aming evaluation forms. Okay? Uh, yes. And huwag po natin kalimutan, teachers, no, na ang ating, uh, evalu- ang ating certificates, uh, hindi po namin yan yung pinagdadamot. Um, we release as many certificates kung kailangan kami mag-release ng 5,000 o 10,000 uh, certificates, uh, ibibigay po natin yan. Pero make sure lang to remember, one, do the evaluation, and two, make sure that you have um, complete um, answers to the assessment part. So, may assessment part po ito, pero dahil po ang ating uh, topic ay crafting valid and uh, reliable assessment, meron po kaming pa-assessment sa evaluation. So, wow. make sure po. Yes. At may valid passing score po yan. Na yan. May passing score po yan. Um, so, make sure lang po natin na ma-accomplish natin ng maayos ang ating assessment, uh, ang ating evaluation. And, naka-experience naka na po kami ng madaming uh, webinars and pag-deliver ng uh, uh, certificates. Huwag po natin kalimutan na ayusin ang data. Huwag po kayo magbadali. Uh, tatlo po yung portals na yung open namin. Uh, wala po yung limit sa number of, uh, of participants na pwedeng sumagot. Kasi pag mali po ang email, babalik sa amin yung certificate. So, ang dami ko na pong certificate na na-receive. <laughs> so, mga 1,000 na po yung certificates na na-receive ko dahil bumalik sa akin. And second, uh, yung pong mga names natin, huwag natin pong uh, kalimutan, ayusin. Uh, yung spelling, kung gusto niyo pong lagyan ng mga titles like LPT, MA, uh, MA or, or doctor, or your citations, um, please um, do include them para po maisama namin sa in yung uh, certificates. Yan. Uh, Ms. Rada, um, go ahead. At kung meron pa po yung thoughts or ideas na pwedeng i-share sa ating uh, mga audience bago tayo magpaalam. 
Wala, natawa lang ako dito sa isang comment. Feeling nervous assessment sa evaluation. <laughs> so, medyo yeah. sure po ako na reliable at valid yung, Ay, yung po. assessment. Yeah. <laughs> Kaya po talaga nakin, na, nakinig ako kanina. Uh, ako din eh. pa, Para po masigurado ko na valid at... Uh, at uh, reliable ang aking assessment na papagawa sa mga teachers. Uh, so, yun po, no? And uh, nag-promise ako dahil sa mga nag-stay po, meron po tayong 100, uh, 930 viewers pa ngayon, no? Um, wow. uh, dahil po nandito pa kayo at bago po kami magpaalam, bibigyan na po namin kayo ng sneak preview sa ating next webinar series. So, meron po tayong ongoing ngayon, yung Google for Education uh, webinar series natin. Pero ito po ay for September. So, pwede nyo na pong abangan ito. At Pagpunta niyo po sa website namin, makikita niyo na kagad ang registration form para sa um, 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 webinar series na ito. Sandali lang po, ano, hinahanap ko lang. Na Sige, abang hinahanap po, Sir Franco, siguro meron lang ako isang pabaon din sa kanila that we as teachers, uh, we, there's so much to learn. We just have to be open-minded. Anyway, uh, what we are doing is all for our students. Yun lang po. So, magiging open-minded. Palagi. And ito na, Ms. Roda, ready na para ating ang mga natitirang 914 uh, participants ay makapag uh, maka, uh, first to see ang ating sneak preview ng ating uh, next webinar series. Okay, so yan po, ang ating 4 C's of 21st Century Learning Series uh, will be done uh, throughout September. So abangan po ang ating mga um, Um, mga topics, okay, so yung ating four forces, collaboration, critical thinking, creativity, and communication. In connection po yan sa mga tools na pwede nyo gamitin, be it online tools or um, in modular format na pwede nyo gamitin to develop these particular skills in the 21st, in this uh, di distance learning uh, to continue developing this uh, 21st century uh, learning uh, skills. Okay, so abangan po natin yan sa ating next na set ng Um, webinars. Okay. So maraming salamat po ulit um, uh, teachers and uh, we'll be saying goodbye now. Okay, we'll be Thank preparing you. your evaluations for this webinar. So maraming salamat po and we'll see you again next Thank time. You.